Just one thing, it's week three of the FIFA 23 EA Sports Cup. Your weekly dose of the best 2v2 FIFA duos going head to head. And over the last two weeks, we've had some top tier teams. And tonight we get to see some great FIFA rivalries taking place on this very stage. Tonight is the turn of the stars of Group A and it features a collection of past champions. MGCF brings the flair and aims to take down SPQR in the Brazilian derby. Meanwhile, Complexity look to return to form and challenge the world's best duos. And in our most anticipated matchup, XL take on TGNIP in what is a clash of FIFA Titans. Another unmissable week of action kicks off now. Well, I'm sure it's going to be an unmissable week indeed. Welcome, it's Halloween as well, don't forget that. Well, Mike LaBelle is back for week three, and Ivan, Dr Nightwatch is here as well. I'm going to start with you, welcome both of you. Uh, Dr Nightwatch, I'm sure you've been watching over the last couple of weeks because, of course, he's a student of FIFA, of the game. So, what have you made of the past two weeks in terms of gameplay and teams that are maybe, maybe underperformed? I think gameplay, we see a lot of similarities to last year. Um, in terms of teams, we've seen overperformers, underperformers. I think I'd highlight maybe Team Heretics, Team Season Cup champions last year. So obviously, you, you, they, they stand out. And overperformers, maybe focus. New team, top of the group, very good team. Only team undefeated as well in the last yeah. two weeks, which was pretty special. Mike, obviously, you've been here. I'm not going to ask you about that. I'm going to ask you about tonight and Group A. We have a North American team on display. World champions, I might add, when we're looking at complexity here, Joxon, Maxi, weren't fantastic last year, but I'd love to see them take the center stage, and I might have a little bit of an NA bias. It's okay, I'm going on record with it. <laughs> That's fine, we are obviously repping North America, and Mike LaBelle will be supporting them, well, complexity, they're in Group A, and that group was decided a couple of weeks ago at our draw. And here's what the other teams in that group have to say about their opponents. Four Brazilian duos this year in the competition. SBQ are the Brazilian duo. How would you feel if MGCF joined you? They're already building the Brazilian derby already. MGCF. We World played Cup. them last year and they yeah, were very, they very, were very good. The best team in Brazil is the top three in the world. I think there's no discussion. That team MGCF are in Group A as well. That is going to be feisty. Which teams are screaming the most? Like MGCF yeah. and SPQR. This man loves it. He loves it. We have got a Brazilian derby in Group A, SPQR against MGCF. There's one thing that these boys don't like, is playing against Brazilian players. I can tell you that for a fact. In the end of the day, we don't really care who we play. Our aim is to win the trophies. You know, you're not going to do that by playing the easy teams. You've got to beat the best to win the trophies. Group A finished. XL, Team Hullet Ninjas in Pyjamas, SBQR, MGCF and Complexity Gaming. First group down for the EA Sports Cup. All I have to say is that, all right, Gorilla, uh, XL there talking about those easy teams. I mean, Nightwatch, who are the easy teams, do you think? I mean, in that group, we have World champions, we have two semi-finalists two semi-finalists in the World Cup, and Excel is none of those three. So I'm just saying. Cool. Well, Are you saying they're the easy team? They might be the easy team is what I'm hearing from Dr. Nilewatch. I mean on paper. Uh, they have two very good players individually, but how they team up, we're gonna see today. I mean, fair point there. 
I was just, they could, could be saying, generally speaking, that there are easy teams, you gotta beat the best teams. Maybe it wasn't to their group. Maybe it wasn't that specific. I don't know. It could have been a general statement. Kyle's gonna catch up with them. I mean, I'm looking back again to the World Cup. Quarter finalists knocked out to Movistar Riders. I think it was on penalties as well, so it was pretty much a draw. Anyway, let's go into the, <laughs> the fixtures and see who's facing who tonight. That's what you are here for, of course. Round one, that Brazilian derby, SBQR Brazil, MGCF Esports. We're all excited for that one. Round two, I'm looking at XL, their first matchup against MGCF. Are they calling them an easy team? We'll find out shortly. And then in round five, that's the all European matchup there. Team Hullet, Ninjas in Pajamas taking on XL. They're just three of the five fixtures that are sticking out to me. Okay, well, let's have a look at the rules then because it's changed up slightly for FIFA 23. It's group format and you can get a win and a draw. Yes, you read that right. As one point, a win is three and a loss is zero. It's double round robin. So all the teams who are playing tonight, they get to play each other again in four weeks' time. And then we'll see which top two teams from each of our four groups qualify for the knockouts in January. OK, we mentioned one of those. Uh, groups. Uh, obviously, the teams from Brazil. We're saying it's the Brazilian derby, MGCF, taking on SPQR Brazil. That's the matchup first. We're excited for this one. Mike, let's talk then about MGCF. I mean, they've got it all. Stop sleeping on the Brazilians. And they're going to remind you they're emotional, they're dancing, they're prancing. We've got the Halloween outfits already ready and on deck. I won't lie, I talked to Kribaldi earlier, he was pulling things out of his pocket already. So I'm hoping that they score goals, it could happen, and nobody should sleep on the Brazilians. I feel like they don't get the respect they deserve. All they do is perform at events. That region is absolutely stacked. I mean, let's speak a bit about SPQR Brazil, slightly lesser known in terms of that partnership. Yeah, I'd like to call them the team holder of South America. They sign talent, they develop talent, they sell talent. Uh, we know Young came from SPQR. They have two very, very good players here at the tournament, so individually they've performed. We'll see if they manage to, to team up as a duo and kind of surprise everyone. Well, I mean, they've done it, haven't they, in the South American region. Can they do it on the global stage? Well, tonight is a chance to try and make that happen. Well, we've heard about our five competing teams tonight. It's time to meet them. Carl Walker has the teams right now. Thank you so much, Rachel. What a night it's going to be. Week three of the EA Sports FIFA 23 EA Sports Cup right here in London. So let's introduce our five teams and get them out to get things kicked off. First up, representing the flag of the United Kingdom, representing Team XL, it is Tom and Gorilla. Now, one team that I'll be hoping to represent Brazil in the best way and come out on top as the top Brazilian team here in Group A, playing under the colours of SPQR Brazil team. Please welcome Felipe151 and Nathan SR22. Our next team have the aim of stopping their Brazilian opponents from coming out on top here of Group A, representing our second Brazilian team and MGCF Esports. It's Cripaldi and Barato. Well, Mike LaBelle was definitely excited about this one. Making the trip across the Atlantic, it's the sole North American representatives here at EA Sports Cup. Please welcome Joxan and Maxi of Complexity Gaming. And finally, one of many people's favorites here before the tournament even started, represented TGNIP. It's the duo of Levy David and Oli Lito.
Well, guys, it's great to chat to you both here in a stage and a venue that you both know very well. You've came here before and had plenty of success. I'll start with you, Ollie, just about being here tonight. New game, new season. Time to kick things off. How have you prepared for this one? Uh, I mean, we had a boot camp in the Netherlands, actually. We flew together uh, here to London. I'm very, very excited being back, you know. Like, Leanne is the best uh, experience ever. Uh, so I'm very, very excited. And Levy, there's been so much talk about who maybe the easy teams are in this group and other groups as well. So that little uh, face there, who would you say is one of the easier teams or someone you're looking forward to playing against? No, I really can't say that. Like, uh, we played MGCF and XL both in E Club World Cup last year. And yeah, MGCF made the semi-final, same as us, and XL made top eight. So I think our group is very tough. You've seen over the last couple of weeks that there's been upsets, there's been teams that have maybe come out and not performed as well as they wanted to, but there has also been teams that have overachieved, some would say. So anything could happen, and as we know, you can get a win, but you can also get a draw. Different tactics tonight. Um, nah, not really. I think we will just play our game, uh, stick to our style, and then um, if we play well, we will have a very, very good chance of winning. Well, I'll let you get ready for your game against Complexity. That's going to be a great one. I'll be keeping the eagle eye on you. I'll be over your shoulders looking at those reactions. You guys can walk off and get yourselves ready. Good luck. Have fun. The 1 minute 30 timer has started. Yes, there's less than 90 seconds to go. You'll see it at the bottom of your screens until we get week three of the EA Sports Cup coming up. That is starting very, very soon. And two men that are very excited about this one. Brandon Smith, Ryan Pessoa, over to you guys. Thank you very much, Carl. And yes, welcome back to week three now of the EA Sports Cup, joined by Ryan Pessoa, who last week was in that pit playing. We have to speak about it first, Ryan. How was it playing? Would you prefer playing or do you prefer being here? Do you have to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, prefer playing, but it didn't go the way we would have liked. We started off kind of slow, got into our ribbon, but yeah, the tie didn't turn in our favour. And yeah, yeah, just one of those weeks. But thankfully, we're still in it. Of course, there's still another week to go. It's only three points from a qualification spot. So we just have to perform when it matters most. Yeah, well, you said you've got, what, four weeks and you're back again for round yeah. two of your group play. Of course, representing Manchester City Esports. We'll be picking his brain across tonight's broadcast. We're back for this one, though. What a game we kick off with, by the way, today. The yeah. Brazilians, when I saw this group drawn, I was thinking, wow, what a game this is going to be. MGCF take on SBQR. They can yeah. say they're friends. They can joke around. As soon as that first whistle's blown, that they're not friends anymore, are they? They're here to play. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a rivalry for sure, which of course stems from wanting to become the best Brazilian team or to show they're the best team. For me, Capaldi is one of those players that I don't know what it is. Every time I see him, it puts a smile on my face just because he's very emotional. He shows his he wears his heart on his sleeve basically when he plays. He's not afraid to celebrate before or after the game, and that's something that I admire. And they done really well last year. They spoke about their achievements um in a two v two format. They've kept the same roster as well, so. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they do. And just one thing I want to pick your mind on, it's something about the format this year. You as a FIFA pro, Ryan, you'll know this more than anyone. You get so used to two v to having two-legged games of FIFA. How was that last week playing for Man City, knowing that you had to play just one leg, one and done? I mean, you had a number of yeah. different results. I don't mean to keep bringing up different results, <laughs> but you know, you had a game when you were 2 nil up, then you, would, you drew 2-2, two -two. you had games you chased back, you had games yeah. where maybe you went down a few goals. How was you approaching those one-legged games and how are these guys approaching them? Um... I'll be honest, I don't like best of one. I know a lot of people do like it, but to me, it's like, it's tough. You have to, as you said, we're, you're used to playing best of two. So best of one, it is different. It might not seem like a huge difference because it's just one extra game, but you have to approach it differently in terms of your your opponent. If they go 2-0 down, they're going to chase the game from early. And of course, dealing with constant pressure on FIFA is not as easy as it would seem. And vice versa, you might be, by, might be losing by two goals. Do you switch up your tactics? You come in with a different mentality, but... Yeah, it is something that you have to adapt to because that's just how the format is. Yeah, and on top of that, you've got no time to react as well. There was yeah, a few yeah, times when you and yeah. Shelves obviously had that difficult game against Ajax last week. You didn't have any time to really sit back and recover from it. Okay, so we've got to go and we've got to play a game. We are kicking off our first round of fixtures here. We're back for Group A in the EA Sports Cup. This is the Brazilian derby as we've teased. It's MGCF Esports against SBQR, the Battle of Brazil. The question is, which Brazilian team will come out on top here? We are in the game and we are already underway. On the flip side of this game, there is also another match taking place, which does involve complexity and TG NIP Team Hullet Ninjas in pyjamas. Currently sitting out of this first round of action is XL. That is the only break that they'll have tonight. Just across this group, Brian, it is stacked of quality. You heard it in the interview there from, uh, from Oli Lito and Levy. Three of the teams were top eight finishers in the FIFA E-Club World Cup last year. Yeah, that's why it, it's all surprising me, of course, Gorilla saying that 
you got to beat what's in front of you. Speaking about easy teams, I don't think there are any easy, easy, any easy teams throughout this competition. You've got teams that have performed on a 1v1 level and in a 2v2 format as well. We speak about the Brazilians, how well they've done last year. And many, many teams throughout the competition have proven to be amongst the best teams in the world. So again, every opponent you play is going to be difficult. And some players can cope with performing under the lights better than others. Keep in mind, SPQ are kicking from left to right in that traditional strip. Could be in for an early chance. Here is R9, the fellow Brazilian looking to kick things off in this all Brazilian matchup. Team MGCF from right to left. No surprise who the captain is in this team of the blue cursor. It is Crepaldi. We don't often see that level of personality from FIFA players, but by God, how much we love it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's something that we need more in the scene. A lot of players need to sort of come out their shells a little bit. It's becoming more of a common theme amongst players now because you kind of just need one person just to set it in motion and then everyone else sort of follows suit. So that's something great to see. And it goes both ways as well, because if you're on the receiving end of that celebration <laughs> yeah. when you've lost two or three nil, <laughs> you're, not, you're not a fan of it, are you? You're completely against it, yeah, building yeah. nicely. His team MGC, if Mbappe will get them underway. And then it is Barreto that scores the opening goal. It's a great start from them. It came from the other end as well. There was a chance from SPQR where it was great goalkeeper movement from Crapaldi, but down the other end, turning defence to attack. They're using a five-back formation. I believe it's a 5 2 one 2 So they had a lot of, of runs going forward. They, they had the, the wingers or the wing-backs providing the width as well. But the build-up came through the middle with Zidane into Mbappe as well with the scoop turn. And yeah, great finish on his weaker foot. And just on the back of that, we look at this this group in general. I think Dr. Nightwatch was, was saying it perfectly. If you look at all the duos, the only team that didn't play as a duo last year is SPQR. Yeah. We've had we've had Nathan come in for, uh, for Rampazzo alongside Felipe. Other than that, the team on your screen, they played together last year. The top they're wearing was probably their best ever outing in the FIFA E-Club World Cup. Top four finish there. Yes, they qualified for the team of the season cup, but they were grouped in that tournament. If anything, that was a learning process for them. They had to go the long way through online qualification. They're coming into this, some would argue, yes, a different game, but feeling very, very good. Yeah, that's something that I was thinking about coming into the tournament myself, playing, because of course, you've got some teams that are new duos. You don't know how they're going to perform. It's still early stages of FIFA. It's only been a month since release, so... Some teams, are they going to hit the ground running? Do they have that the relationship to perform well enough? Some people might not get on well with each other, but it depends to um, their relationship, how well they perform. And you can see some of the teams started off extremely well. We saw Focus last week, the best team, the, the only undefeated team so far in a, the tournament. So far as we see a potential chance here. Building nicely, Mbappe looking for his second defender well by Vieira. I mean, the teams haven't really changed too much from week one. There has been, obviously, the out-of-position promo that's come into play. I did see... Jao Cancelo and another, Brazil, uh, another Portuguese player, Cristiano Ronaldo, maybe teased into a few teams on the bench, if not. I have to ask you this question, Ryan. Who was the, uh, the worst player to play against last week? Oh, I'd say Zidane. I thought Zidane was incredible in terms of his in-game stuff. He offers a lot in the midfield, but what sort of surprised me a little bit more is the threat he has going forward as well. And defensively, doesn't have the highest defensive stats, but he does enough to cut the lanes, especially if you're manually controlling him and applying pressure, so... Yeah. And in terms of formation last week when you were playing, what was the sort of the meta formation or was it different? Yeah, a lot of teams played different formations. We came up against a 4 triple 2 a 4 3 2 one But the one that caught us off guard was the 5-2-1-2. It's very good in a 1v1 situation. But in 2v2, as we see here, MGCF using it. Focus used 5 2 I was going to say, credit yeah. for all Focus were, and, were using that, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, they scored a lot of goals against us. They scored four against us, four against PSG. So it's very hard to break down, but... Again, it's, it's very hard to say what's the meta formation. I think this year, there's a lot of goal to... Oh, my. Oh, this could be a gift. Wow. It's a great save. Could have been a huge mistake there. Tried to head it back to the goalkeeper to retain possession, but almost led to a, an easy chance there. You can't give away those sort of mistakes in 2v2. We learned that the hard way. Giving away easy goals is something that you could pay the price. And yeah, again, it's something that sort of deflates you a little bit when your opponent doesn't have to work for his goal. Especially in one-legged FIFA, Ryan. There isn't going to be all the chances in the world to turn this one around. Yeah. 30 minutes played it. And this Brazilian derby is MGCF Esports 1. SPQR nil. We'll keep you up to date with that complexity. Team Hullet Ninjas in pyjamas game as soon as we get the scores through. As I said, XL not playing in this first opening round of play here. They'll be on and in action from round two, three, four and... Round five here of the EA Sports Cup. All the action from Group A coming to you live from London in this $250,000 2v2 
FIFA 23 tournament. Ball down the line. This is Cafu now. What an overlap for SPQR. They do their best to whip it across. Lucio. Maybe panic can clears that one away, but still does do his job. Starting to get a bit more of a feel on the ball while SPQ up. And you're seeing those fullbacks just offering their support. There's Ambrotta and Cafu. How much longer do you think they're going to be staples before? Maybe someone else comes into that. I mean, as I said, Jao Cancelo could could be that. Yeah, I think Kafu might be a staple in the team for a little while. Zambrotta was sort of our weak point, if I'm being honest, in last week. He's sort of, he, he's not the fastest, but neither is Cancelo, to be fair. So he, he wouldn't be a direct replacement. But I felt as if we were sort of susceptible to, to faster players on the wing, on Zambrotta's side. But in a, in a five-back, if you have him in a left wing-back, it's going to work perfectly well. Who else plays there, though, instead of Zambrotta? Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. There's not many options. So you kind of just have to stick with that until later on in the year when new cars are released or maybe improved versions. So, Dan, you mentioned he was deadly last week. Reverse Elastico. It was a good idea with a disguised pass from Barreto, who was looking for his teammate, Krapaldi. Keep an eye on those individual player curses above the in game items' heads. Pay attention there. Did you see the way he won the ball back with Lucio, especially with the five back? You can sort of step with one of the centre backs aggressively, try and retain possession or try and. Um, is that going to be onside? I think it is just onside. We'll try and retain um, possession from your opponent, but in a normal fullback, you do that. There's huge space in behind, and you're, you're susceptible for three balls or the first time L1 R1 um, passes behind the defence. Well, half time in this one. MGCF do lead this by a goal to nil. It was an early goal from Mbappe. In this first opening matchup here in round one of the EA Sports Cup. It is the side that do have the E Nations Cup winner. All to do for SPQ. A half time, as you can see, there is the all important scoreline on the screen. Beretta was the player that did get that goal. But as you're picking up on that, Lucio, it needs that in 2v2, though. Yeah, you do. You, you have to command that between, I'm sure, between you and Shells. You know, who does the goalkeeper movement? Who is maybe in charge of taking free kicks? Yeah, that's something that we speak about as well with defensively being aggressive. Because in 2v2, you can sort of fall in the trap of being passive. Um, just because in a 1v1 format, you're in control of every player on the pitch. In a 2v2, you rely on your opponent. So the best teams are the ones that are sort of in sync with one another. They play as one. So you kind of have to trust your, your teammate that if you don't press, your, team, your teammate's going to press. Or if you do press, your teammate's going to be responsible to drop in and defend for you. But in a five-back, you kind of you don't even need to do that because you have the extra player there already for you. And if we have to be critical, Ryan, how do SPQR break down this back five? Um, it's hard for me to say because we came off of a, a thumping last week from Focus when they played it. But they're still in the game. It's only a one goal deficit with the second half still to play. And a, a common theme as well is going constant press. Well, there has been a goal in the other game. It's between Team pulling injured in pyjamas in complexity. They're the ones that have got it. The two-time club World Cup champions. They might not have had the best of FIFA 22 years. The back fresh for FIFA 23. And that's a massive goal for them. They're fresh landing in London after a very long trip from the US. Wow, that is a big goal, I'll be honest. Fair play to complexity. I think a lot of people would have sort of ruled them out based on last year they didn't have the best of years, but people forget that. It's the same duo that won Club World Cup twice in the past. So they have the, the know-how on how to win 2v2 tournaments. They've got the, the chemistry with one another. But yeah, that's a huge... If they can see that out and get three points against Team Hullet, Ninjas in pyjamas, that'll be a fantastic result as we see there. Another thing that you will see a lot this year is those passes, those chipped balls into Rude Hullet, making the late runs in the box, but it didn't work at that time. It was something that I think you guys enjoyed last week, Manchester City. I saw quite a few little chip balls yeah, over yeah, the yeah. top. You, you kind of have to with the way this FIFA works. It's kind of easier because the, the lock-on system there isn't favourable for the defensive team, so you kind of just have to exploit that. As you see, look, the run, the, he's clicked onto Hullet there. Even R9 was teasing that run. There's a down from the edge of the box. It needs a big save, but the referee pulls it back for a free kick. I'll be honest, this what could can be happen it. here? 21 yards out, played short into R9 for a direct shot. That's, to me, I think you have to go direct there, in my opinion. It's close enough to go direct. We've seen in the first week, Fnatic with Tex and Diogo scoring a free kick just on the edge of the box. Similar distance out as well. And free kicks this year, in my opinion, are quite easy to master compared to previous years. That, to me, has to be direct. I think so as well. I, I, honestly, I sit there and I think, why have SPQR got a bit excited there and tried to play quickly? Yeah, they, they rushed it. They had more time. But maybe it's worked for them in, in previous situations, who are we to say? But again, that's just something that I would look towards going direct. Oh, no, and stop it. Fancied it from that far out. And I mean... 
over the weekend. I think I saw someone score with Kulabai doing that from the <laughs> edge of the box. So, uh, I mean, try what you can. Last third of this game. Scoreline still remains the same. As we said, if you missed the goal, complexity leading. Team Hullet Ninjas in pyjamas by a goal to nil in that one. This is our first round of action from the EA Sports Cup. Week three, live from London. SPQR trying to grind their way forward. A couple of step-overs from Jarzinho. Mbappe back to our nine, Ooh. who will dance quite literally. He's way into the box. He needed a good bit of goal, bit of, bit of defending, I should say, there. That would have been special. MGCF. <laughs> that would have been special if he managed to, to pull off the skill move there into a shot, but it wasn't meant to be. But promising signs so far in this first part of the second half. They just need to put a little bit more, maybe take a few more risks, because as we say, it's a, it's a best of one. They have to, to push forward to try and get that goal back to equalise. Oh, wow, that's a cheeky chip. Zidane's there, and so is Vieira, just gets his body around it. But we have to say that the team in the ascendancy right now is SPQR. They have been on top. Will we see a counter-attack, though, from MGCF now? It's just discipline. They're, they're playing the ball now. They know that it's the last 20 minutes. They can keep possession. They can stand still. They need to to retain possession in order to try and see out and limit chances, chances for SPQR, who now know that if they do get the ball back, they have to push bodies forward. Cafu, and it goes all the way across to Hullet, who's made his ongoing run from the centre of midfield. I mean, we did say about this before we kicked off the broadcast that maybe you don't think we're going to see as many goals tonight. I mean, last week we saw 28, week one we saw 33 goals. Yeah. But with it being one-legged games of FIFA, I mean, it's... It's going to happen. You're going to see, we saw a 0-0 once, you're going to see quite a few 1-0s. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of close games, as we say. There's a lot of fantastic teams here, fantastic duos. And after seeing the first two weeks, you kind of get a, a gist of how to play. It kind of helps a little bit more if you're maybe one of the teams that are play, playing in the later stage. You can sort of analyse what other teams have been doing and what has re resulted in them getting a lot of success. But I think now for SBQR, they need to make some changes, some personal changes. Maybe some tactical ones as well. I think Constant Press has to come out. We played against Ajax last week, who are another set of Brazilians as well in PHC and Resende. And they pressed us almost instantly in the first half. And it worked well for them. Because Constant Press is, is very difficult to, to play out of, especially because you can't dribble as well as you could have in, in previous years. And it's something you don't always get the opportunity to do, play against Brazilians, because, you know, yeah, yeah. connectivity-wise, it's just not possible. What is... I always ask this question. What is the biggest difference from a South American player to a European player, and especially this year on FIFA 23 when the game is just so different. Yeah, you'd think that it wouldn't be a difference because ultimately we're all playing the same game. However, they do play it differently. It's same with North Americans as well. I noticed back in the days, they were just the, the, the nations or the, the region that just take long shots. Yeah. Anytime there's space, shoot, goal. That's it. They wouldn't, they try not to necessarily play directly into the box. You say with Brazilians as well, they have a lot more flair. They're a lot more disciplined defensively as well. But again, you still do see that in Europe as well. It's not saying that that's something that's missing. But I think for you, for Brazilians that they're not afraid to celebrate their goals and that aspect as well, which again, I mentioned how much I enjoy that. Again, it was, I have to agree with you, for a period of time in North America, they were just happy to take really long yeah, shots. Anyway. So maybe, you know, the European style was just to play really, really tidy football yeah. and try and walk it into the goal. But yeah. I think you're right. Times have changed since then. And there's 12 minutes left in this one in our all Brazilian matchup where the scoreline is still 1 0 to MGCF. There has been a couple of changes that Ginola comes on for MGCF, and so does the man that is scaring everybody in the FIFA World Harland. What can he add? The very useful sub bringing him on, especially when you're winning, because he's somebody that you can trust him to run down the byline with his pace, his power, his strength. He's an outlet as well, he is. isn't he's he? A, he's, a, he's a massive outlet. Of course, doesn't have the best dribbling, so you wouldn't trust him. He's not somebody you play the ball to feet. You play it over the defensive line where there's a lot of space, and you do find that space in the five-back because of the way you notice how they're playing. They're comfortable to switch the ball. They're just keeping possession. And so I'm saying with SPQ, they, there's no constant press on it. Doesn't seem as, it seems as if that they're sort of happy to, to allow them to have possession. Here's maybe the gaps that will start to appear. Barreto in possession. Yeah, Torre. Could be around the corner to Ginola. They can conclude the game now. MGC are back inside. Yeah, Torre's there. Pele somehow back defending. He needs to be much further forward than he is. Time is running out. It's not on their side. Maybe they have to introduce this constant pressure. If it's not already a thing. Yeah, it really hasn't been been something that maybe they've, they've 
potentially look to it too late. And this is the pass into Harden that I was talking about. Oh, they about. can conclude the game now if they can get this right. They don't need to, really. Uh, I'm sure they're just going to go back now. Just discipline. That's something that you need to do, and it's, it's something that we lacked as Man City, in, in all honesty, in the first week. Even in games where you might not even be winning, it might be nil-nil, and your opponent is just getting a, a hold of the game. They're performing better than you in the last 10 minutes. There's no need to push forward or anything. You can just wait for the last attack, but this last attack for SBQR has to be decisive if they're going to get back into the game. This is it. Now and ever, we've played the added time. One big win from Hurlit. No, the referee still says we're not done. That should do us in the Brazilian matchup. It didn't deliver in the goals, but it's delivered in the big three points for MGCF. A game that they probably would have been desperate to win today here in London. Their first opening matchup season. They get three points in Group A, and it is back to the drawing board for XBQR. There were stages in that game, Ryan, when they were building into it, but yeah. they just lacked a little bit, didn't they? Yeah, they did. I felt as if they came into it a little bit more at the start of the second half, but there wasn't much to separate them. I'll be completely honest. Of course, we saw the goal early on from Capaldi and Barreto, but other than that, there weren't too many clear-cut chances. Well, there we have it. Game one done here in Group A. As we said, five rounds of action coming from the EA Sports Cup. There are plenty more games to be played. We left that uh, team Hullet Ninjas in pyjamas game. A complexity were 1-0 up in it. You can just see them just there in, in the pit, so to speak. What's it like in that pit? Um, of course, it's, it's enjoyable just being back in LAN, uh, at a LAN event, just being amongst the cameras, the, the, just everybody in person is a lot better than, of course, playing online. But yeah, it's great to, to be there. Whether you're performing well or not, it's just always good just to be in and amongst the best players. No, absolutely. As we said, there is a lot more to come here. And again, a lot to come from that pit as well. There'll be a lot of, uh, of big celebrations today. With that being said, I believe we can go over to Carl Walker now, who's got an interview with that winning team, MGCF. Brandon, thank you so much. I do indeed. Some dance moves as well at the end. I saw those hips go in. An incredible start to the tournament. How important was it for you both to get that win early on? This, this tournament is hard because they, I have so much teams and it's very important to win the first game. Now, obviously, for that first game, it's so important because there's no second game in that one. So you wanted to make sure that you get off to a winning start, no matter who it was against. But does it make it that little bit sweeter that it was against the fellow Brazilians in SBQR? É claro que vocês têm apenas um jogo, vocês não têm um segundo jogo. Mas se deu um gostinho especial ganhar dos brasileiros? Ah, eu acho que com certeza, porque é uma rivalidade brasileira, só que dentro de campo ali é totalmente, não tem amizade nenhuma. Ali é nosso, cada um querendo trazer a nossa vitória para o nosso time. Só que fora de campo a gente é parceiro, só que ganhar deles é muito importante para a gente, ainda mais no, no primeiro jogo. E bater na SPQ é sempre da hora. Of course, we're friends, but while we're playing, it's war. So, of course, it's a great taste. It gives us a feeling of conquering, no doubt. Well, we saw that definitely with the celebrations, let's say. Just very quickly, talk us through the dancing, the, the shades, where are they, the wigs as well. You guys have it all. Are we going to see some more dancing today? Então, teve a dança, teve o óculos escuros, teve aquela, aquela resenha toda entre vocês. Vai ter mais disso ou não? Isso daí pode esperar o campeonato inteiro, que resenha aí, a jogadinha vai ter o campeonato inteiro. Well, you'll see that throughout the championship, no doubt. I'm looking forward to seeing those dance moves throughout the season. Let's throw it back to three people that have got some incredible dance moves as well. Maybe not cool enough to pull off the shades. Ivan, Mike and Rachel, over to you. Don't even take it there, Carl Walker. You're not going to get us. unnecessary. You're not getting us dancing. Maybe we had the sunglasses on, but they didn't even bring those tonight. But I did like they said it was war between the Brazilians. They're friends off the pitch, but then as soon as they play against them, it's war. Strong words there from those boys. But obviously the, the results spoke for themselves. 1-0 in the end. It wasn't super decisive. They had that early goal. And then it just looked like SPQR put everything backwards and they couldn't quite break them to get that second. I mean, I think that's what the 2v2 is all about we've seen so far. It's one team goes in the lead, constant press, and you defend until the end of the game. So we saw some of that, ended 1-0, so three points on the board for, uh, for the MGCF boys. If that is going to be 
the same running theme. How does the opposing team who are down break through? Well, to be fair, I think MGCF could have had more in that game as well. They had more opportunities. Um, and it, it comes down to being able to get out of the back, beating that constant press, and you're going to force an agenda, and then finishing the opportunities. A lot of people are struggling right now beating the goalkeeper movement. We're seeing chances created, but you still got to be able to convert. Well, we saw one goal, a few chances. Let's have a quick look at that goal then with Mike LaBelle in this, the analysis presented by PlayStation Tournaments. And I'm going to call this a checklist, so to speak. We have three checks with the build-up play. You're going to have the switch of the pitch, which is very common. Everybody's looking for that same penetrating space, a way to get into the, the middle of the pitch and be able to kind of execute. You do a great job here. It looks almost rudimentary, but you have that split. You have a misstep from a midfielder, and then you're going to take advantage. You're finding that split, and then once you've got those options, you're going to take that attacking space and you're going to utilize it. You're going to see a little quick skill move here with Zidane, extra pass, and then one more freeze frame, and Bappe gets his eyes up. I call it the goalkeeper glance. Is he moving? Is he staying across the body? And Bappe is going to be able to convert. And it leads to the only goal. And they did it confidently. They were decisive. And it made it where you had to chase the game. When you're ahead, it's easier to play. You feel a little more relaxed. I mean, Knight, which obviously you've been breaking down, I guess, the new game. How important, like Mike has just been alluding to, is goalkeeper movement? And how much should these teams be implementing it into their game? I think it's very important. 1v1, but more so in 2v2. Especially because one player can move the goalkeeper and the other one can defend. It makes it even harder to create a clear goal scoring chance. You can think, cool, I've beaten both defenders, now I can shoot and score. And suddenly the keeper is hugging the post and you've not scored. So I think it's something you have to master. Yeah, absolutely. Well, obviously we know the result in the Brazilian derby, as we've been calling it, 1-0 to MGCF. The other matchup, unfortunately we've had a little bit of a techie error at the 89th minute. Of course that's going to happen then. So we do only have uh, the result up until then. We're trying to get that one back and running. But let's see what happened then. Complexity ninjas in pajamas. And you see more of that goalkeeper movement. And it is a bit of a guessing game, almost a 50-50. Uh, to see who's going to move at the right time at the right place. You see that near post green time finish, complexity up 1-0. And as Nightwatch was kind of saying, they might have been the underdog of the group, even though they're world champs. Yeah, why? Not me, though. I didn't say that. Well, we're going off re <laughs> recent form, aren't we? Obviously, they were North American, these regional champions, 2v2. And then, obviously, 2019, they won on the world stage. They haven't been able to match those standards, and especially this summer, where I think a lot of people were writing them off based on the performances at the World Cup, which, you know, we only have to look at past performances to go, what are they going to do this season? They managed to change something around by the looks of things in this first game. What do you think that is? I think that it's really important, like the communication between both players and the way you are kind of off the pitch and on the pitch. Um, I think both players this year seem to be kind of more I would say maybe focus on 2v2 because last year was kind of a different ecosystem. It's 2v2, 1v1, 2v2, 1v1 all the time. Whereas now we can kind of more focus on, on the different aspects of, of competition. Um, and I think having the pressure off, coming off a bad year, so to speak, uh, definitely helps them. Yeah, Mike, you know the players really well. How do they kind of complement each other as well when we see them off and on the pitch? Well, I'm just going to build off of what Nightwatch had to say where there's an alignment and you have yeah. to coordinate. If one player's stepping, the other one's sitting back, it's going to be a recipe for disaster. So it's so important that both you guys are sharing in all those movements. And that's where you get a competitive advantage because in theory here, you can move a lot more players simultaneously. If you've got the goalkeeper moving, you got two people defending, you got a midfielder, you got a double team, a team press, all these things happening at the same time. But you got to be aligned. You have to be on the same page. I just played some 2v2s with people I hadn't practiced with. It didn't go that well. I'm not happy about it. I'm not proud about it. It happened. I mean, I think looking at all of these squads here, they've played with each other. So that's obviously something we hadn't seen uh, necessarily last week. We had a couple of new teams. So I guess to see people building each year is something that obviously is going to give them the edge. Let's now then talk about the team on the other side. Uh, team Hullet Ninjas and Pajamas, again, a team that we've seen do some great things. Again, they were semi-finalists, weren't they, in the summer at the World Cup. I think, though, they were a little bit disappointed. I'm going to say that because actually Levy and Olito, they qualified for all three World Cups. I think there was only six or seven players that did that, which I feel they, they felt they were going to win one of those titles. They, they felt like they were going to be at least in a final. That's at least the energy that I got. Whether it was a 2v2 or a 1v1, somebody was going to make a final and that didn't happen. I think definitely. I think uh, if you followed Olito's run, especially in 1v1, uh, the fact he made World Cup was a miracle in its own way because to make playoffs he he made some crazy crazy games some crazy results then at playoffs he he went through the the hardest competition but I think 
when you watch back the way they lost last year at Club World Cup, they were both very, very disappointed. They knew they kind of had the strength to go all the way. That didn't happen, so now they're kind of back for revenge. It's probably rubbing salt in the wounds that actually Saf, who knocked him out, is standing behind complexity at yeah. the moment. We might try and get Singray, who used to play for Saf, and have uh, some thoughts on his World Cup run um, from the summer You're and what today. he's doing this year as well. Of course, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Obviously, that matchup hasn't finished yet. We're still 1 0 to complexity over Team Hullet Ninjas in pajamas. We'll clear up that matchup in a few moments' time, but for now, we'll go to a, a quick break. I mean, probably stay. The EA Sports Cup is presented by PlayStation Tournaments. Compete in PlayStation Tournaments. Win your share of cash prizes, FIFA points and more as you face off in foot and club competitions. Sign up for weekly and monthly tournaments on your PS4 console or at compete.playstation.com to test your skills on the pitch. Think you have what it takes? PlayStation. Well, welcome back to London for the EA Sports Cup. As we said, there's a few technical difficulties just in that game you can see behind me there. As we said, it was 1-0 to complexity. I think 89th minute on the clock in that game, yeah. so not long left at all. As soon as it's fixed and we'll sort those issues out, we'll give you a scoreline. However, there's another game on the opposite side of the pit that we will be going into. It's round two. We're going to kick off round two because why, you know, why should we wait any longer? Let's get going. It's XL who make their debut yep. in this tournament in the EA Sports Cup. Obviously, we've seen them many times before. They were a Masters team last year. They've placed very well in the FIFA E Club Bowl Cup alongside this team here, MGCF. The thing is, though, Ryan, they were on opposite sides of the bracket, weren't yeah. they? So they didn't really have to play yep. that big knockout game. XL, in, in, in overall, massive investment in the FIFA Esports scene. One of the few UK teams that are still in FIFA Esports. Last year, that yes, they didn't win a trophy, but they did place well in the yeah. tournaments that they did play in. Yeah, absolutely. Promising signs from both Guerrero and, and Tommy, who are fantastic in the 1v1 scene. In the 2v2 scene, I think they're still, for their sake anyway, in, the, in their um, position, in they're a little bit away away from where they would have liked to have finished last year. Despite them finishing top eight, I believe it was, they would have liked to go extra. But Gorilla spoke about winning trophies. That is the, the pinnacle for him in competing work. Whether it's 1v1 or 2v2, that is the aim and the ambition to be hoping that they can kickstart against a team that's already won their first game. And from experience, coming off of, of a break, or for them, they didn't even play any games so far. This is their first game up. Playing a team that has already just played, you can be caught off guard. And how do you think that would have, I mean, helped or, or hindered XL missing that first round? Because yeah. mm. you'd, you'd rather have a break off the two rounds you've played, you know, when everyone's kicked off and you're just sitting there in the back room in that players' room and you're the only team there. What do you think they would have been doing? A quick warm-up game, do you think? I've seen a, a few players, you were doing it before, just skill games, just to get used to certain yeah. animations in, in FIFA 23. It's actually difficult to find friendlies, I'll be honest, at this stage, of course, because the, the teams that are here are obviously teams you're competing against, so they're not viable options. And the, the people at home, is not necessarily the same. There's obviously a, a disparity in teams because you're playing with unlocked accounts at EA events. So it's kind of hard to find teams. So yeah, just potentially watching your opponents, seeing what they've done well, what they, done, what they didn't do well as well. And I think for XL, they're very good defensively as well. I don't think they're going to concede too many goals, in my opinion. I think they're very disciplined, especially with Javi coming in as their coach this year. I expect them to be 
a lot more um, a lot more defensively structured than they have been. Yeah, just want to pick up on that. Javi that's come in, the Spaniard, was working with Ducks game in last year. He helped Neat get to two Ela Liga trophies in his time, and now he's made the move over to England. It was a big move for him, the one that he's very excited about. We spoke to him before we kicked off play today. So he can't wait to get going with this EA Sports Cup XL. Of course, we'll be kicking from left to right in that dark strip. And MGCF will be playing in that very interesting, colourful strip, which uh, was, was a bit bright on the eye <laughs> when, yeah. they, when they scored in their opening game. You mentioned defensive style of play. They've not conceded a goal yet, Ryan. And to be honest, they looked pretty solid with that five back, maybe for not much longer. Ooh. It was a time green finish. Unfortunately, it flew into the stand. Yeah, on the weaker foot of the new icon in the game, the new item, Jairzinho. But it was a good attack. There's a lot of options there. Maybe that they weren't really anticipating because, again, there were there were spaces to play a first-time pass. But it's easier said than done when you're when you're playing. And I think they're playing a 4-3-2-1 with the, the right back. Usually you associate uh, the left back going forward in the in the 4-3-2-1. But I think it looks as if they're using Kaku as that the outlet. Interesting as well for Jarzini. I'm not sure on that, on that position modifier where he can help play in the pitch, but he's normally on this side of the pitch, yeah. on the right-hand side. Looks to be more out on the left. Yeah, I think he's, they've got him in left centre mid, and that's, a, that's one of the crosses that you're going to have to watch out for. That is a very common thing in 2v2, in 1v1 as well, but those crosses in there are, are very, very effective. Pay attention to the direct corner here. I don't want to say it too loud, but this, to me, this is a, an option to, to go for goal. Well, well, well. What's Xavi been doing in the XL training ground to try and perfect these moments? It is Gorilla taking the corner. Tom's in the box. It's whipped in towards the front post. Arnine's just threw his body at it. Yet the chance is still alive. Pelle, Gorilla, with his usual flair in the box, will win another corner for XL. They're looking to build pressure. Tom this time over it. Keep an eye on those player curses. Players moving in the box heavily as well. Hullet's being controlled, and so I think he's Maldini. Just faking their movement. The smallest of changes, and it goes again. Exactly there. What are they looking for? Just that front post runner? Yeah, corners this year are, are pretty much like penalties, in all honesty. They're very effective to score goals from, and it's kind of hard to, to nullify them. But the first corner was one where you sort of had the better angle there. You could even go for a, a, a di direct corner, which is very effective this year as well. But the, the R9 done well there to, to get something on it, to get it out of the area. But as I said, corners, they say, you just look to drive it into the box and hope that you can get a lock on. Excel coming forward in numbers. Jarzini finds the feet of R9. His gorilla in control. He timed it green. He did everything right. Unfortunately, though, there was the six foot plus frame of Edwin van der Sar. Stopping Excel from going up. By goal to nil. And I don't believe <gasps> my oh. eyes. There's been a goal. Oh my god. With one minute left, Team Will and Indies in pyjamas have just snatched a point from the game, and there's the goal that's just done it. There was a huge wow. break in that game for a technical pause, and complexity must be. So angry at themselves. There was a minute left. Yeah, they would have definitely had, or Team Hullet would have had kickoff there. That's heartbreaking, I'll be honest. They're, they're still time. They've got their own kickoff now to try and respond and try and get back their, their lead. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Oh, it's offside. What a ball that is. Every time Rude Hullet makes a run into the box, I think he almost has to be tracked. Genuinely, he's such a, a weapon when you, when you trigger it at the runs into the box. Just because of his physical frame, he doesn't necessarily have to go directly for goal. But you saw there a header down into a striker, maybe a first time shot. That break, though, Ryan, a five minute break or so. Complexity looked really good. Now they've just given away technically two points. XL looking to kick things off here. It's Tom Station. back inside to Gorilla. That's fantastic composure from Pele as XL gets things moving for the UK esports organization who are looking for their first three points in the EA Sports Cup. Oh, it's lovely, and it's been coming as well. They've been pressing away, performing well going forward. Feels as if it was only a matter of time before they broke their deadlock. As you said, great composure there. Be interested to see whether that was Tom or Gorilla. I wasn't paying too attention to the person that took the shot with Pele. I believe it was Gorilla, but that was fantastic play from the UK boys. There's a lot of time there as well for yeah, Pele. Yeah, he had a lot of time. It was a great ball as well, great selection of of chips pass there. And we've had a full time in 
from that other game where there was a technical pause. That was from the round one fixture. A point has been shared apiece for Team Hullet Ninjas in pyjamas. How they pulled that one back, fair play to them. They had a huge tactical plan coming to the last two minutes of that one, but a huge two points drop for a complexity. Yeah, it's, it's sad. It is, I'll be honest, because it, it's just been snatched away from you in the last moments where if the game didn't cut, you never know. It's just one of those ones you just have to play it what's in front of you and they just maybe just didn't defend enough to, to stop that. But it's, again, it's very harsh. Here's another chance. XL looking for two Mbappe's in a running race with Cafu. Just back to that result very quickly. The good thing is there, Ryan, complexity are off this round. So they've got a round off, which yeah. at least can give them a bit of time just to cool their mind after that disappointing one run result in their eyes. Another possession given away there needlessly from MGCF. They haven't played as well as they did in the first game against the, their fellow Brazilians, but it's been very impressive from Excel so far. Very, very impressed with the way they're defending, the way they're going forward. There always seems to be options, as you can see here, another chance. Good see. From Zidane, it still is alive. Cafu building nicely. Pele trying to do his best to link up his fellow Brazilian icon in there in Jardinho, but it wasn't the cleanest of passes. I mean, in the media day in September, XL clearly stated one team they didn't want to play was MGCF, just because of that Brazilian nature and play style that they're not really the biggest of fans of. And let's be honest, they don't really have a lot of time to play against it. Yeah, there's no real, real way to, to actually get some practice in. But I'm interested to see if MGCF change anything tactically at halftime or maybe sometime in the second half because they're still in that five back formation it's very hard to press in you can see there's there's a lot of space in possession in the midfield for excel just to manipulate try and see if there's any way forward there's going to be one minute of added time here and i'm not too sure what's happened but yeah i don't know yeah don't worry no one's uh standing there and not wanting to tackle the ball i think there was a small issue there with a controller potentially. Half time though, XL are currently leading this game by a goal. Now, just on that though, MGCF look like a different team. I yeah, mean, yeah. and a very bad version of what we just saw in round one from them. Lacked confidence, lacked really any sort of possession on the ball, and just looked fizzled out to, compared to what XL brought. They didn't look like scoring whatsoever. So maybe that little half time break might be at a perfect time for them because they just need to pick up their performance. They've won their first game. They know what it takes to win. And the fact that they're not playing at their best and they're only down by one, you can only take that as a positive. And I honestly think it's a rarity, and I mean this, that we'll see a team go unbeaten. I know yeah, yeah, focused yeah. did it last week, but the games are so quick, so fast. And the level here in London at the EA Sports Cup is just so good as well, Ryan, that to go unbeaten in the group stage is just sort of feels impossible unless you focus. Yeah. The thing is, there's going to be a lot of games where which are, are tightly contested. That's why I sort of think there's going to be a lot of draws as well. I wouldn't be shocked to see a lot of draws. We even saw in the complexity Team Hullet game, it ended it in a 1-1 draw. But again, we saw in, in most of the groups, there isn't really a huge gap. On the, the only team we've seen pull away is Focus with 10 points. They have the highest points throughout the, the two weeks so far. Yeah, well, keep in mind that there are two rounds of games or technically two week fixtures for every group here. Group A, B, C and D. Of course, there's 20 teams uh, involved in this competition from all over the world. Eight weeks of action. Only top two go through. Yeah. If I had to put you on the spot, in your situation right now, Manchester City are on two points, obviously focus are on 10. What do you think the number could be in average across a lot of groups to get you through? I'd probably say like 11, maybe. It depends though, because every group's different. We see all the first yeah. week, there's only a difference between first and fifth, and it's three points. I think it's from Riders and is it Falcons, I believe, who are, I think it's Falcons. So there's, it, it kind of depends. There's going to be a lot of different results in all of the groups. So we see there with the stats, it's been one-way traffic in terms of shots, and it's to be to be honest, I think a one nil lead for Excel sort of flatters MGCF. Yeah, I mean look, let's look at the the breakdown of the stats there. XG, you know what that means. There's been a lack of that from MGCF so far in this matchup. As we said, we're in round two, we're just getting back into the game, as we said, just before half time. We left it at 1-0. Look at that man on your screen, Xavi, with a tactic board, a white board that's got a pen, a few magnets in there as well. <laughs> He's really bringing his Pep Guardiola to the EA Sports Cup. Yeah. One of the top FIFA coaches in the game. You look around, you look at Edu, of course, with his team uh, in Team Heretics. It wasn't a great week for them last week, but there's a few people that just live and breathe FIFA, not for playing it, but for coaching it. And, and they're a great two example of them. Now, I respect it highly, of course. It's great to have a coach alongside you that is 
that dedicated and indulged in wanting to do well. They research your opponents for you. They kind of do the nitty gritty that you don't have to do. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a great thing to have. Well, let's have a look at the complexity Ninjas in Pyjamas game, which did finish. And this is how it did end. As we said, there was two goals in it. And this is the goal that put complexity up just before the 60th minute, Ryan. A lovely yeah, finish there. I think that was Joxan that would have got that goal. There's the celebrations on your screen. And then just talk me through what on earth happened at the end of the game. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if it, if they had kickoff or not. They, It's really hard to say because I would love to know because we spoke about, we were told that the, the disconnection came towards the latter stages of the game. So it would have been a last minute goal. If it was from kickoff, I kind of understand it because you don't have possession. But if Complexity started with possession after the restart and gave it away, that's that's And what did you tell me, Ryan? Watch out when Hullet makes a run yeah, yeah. into the Literally, box. You have to you have to follow the run all the time with him just because there's not many defenders or anyone that can sort of muscle him off the ball or, or outrun him. So when he makes that run, he's in his full stride. You just have to, to track the run, maybe give him a few, few yards just in case. But yeah, he's deadly when he gets into the box, as we, we just saw. Yeah, we will be jumping back into the XL uh, MGCF game. That'll be hopefully in the next 10 seconds or so. We'll be jumping into the second half there. As we said, that is 1-0. We've seen a lot of low-scoring games across the board. You tease that it could be a low-scoring week in general. Yeah. Okay, there's a, there's a lot. There's a lot still to play here as we're jumping back into this one any minute now. We need to see so much more from MGCF if there is any chance of them getting back into this one. As we look across the other side of the pit as well, it's SBQR against TGNIP. We'll give you the update of that game as we get them to. Back on the way, though, for the second half here. You could argue more of the same from XL, right? Yeah. It's been pretty good from them. Absolutely. They've been phenomenal going forward. As I said, they, they had a lot of chances. It potentially could have been more than the one goal lead going into half time. But it's a new half now. They just have to make sure they can follow on in the same way they've done in the first half. But for MGCF, as I said, I wonder if there's going to be any changes. I'm, I'm not too sure. It looks as if there might have been. A big question for you, Ryan. I've seen Yaya Torre get pushed out of a few teams just because of Zidane coming in and offering you that sort of that complete midfielder. Yeah. Is he pushed out of your team or is the Manchester City man still in there just about? No, nah, he's not. He, he can't start if there's the options of Hullet and Zidane for me on the game so far. Maybe the the other version of a Yaya Torre card coming out with um, throughout the year anyway. But for me right now, Zidane and Hullet are usually the two players you'd opt for in the centre. Maybe if you have a third player, you could you could use him. There's been a goal in the other game between SPQR and TGNIP. Which way has it gone? It looks as if it's gone to the Swedes. And the Dutch FIFA player, he has gone the way of TGNIP. They lead by a goal to nil. We spoke of Hullet. We just keep speaking about Ruud Hullet. And the more we talk about him, the more goals he keeps scoring. Yeah, that is a, a huge start for Olelito and Levy in that game. It all came from a pass, though, out from the back with SBQR and it led to the Travella shot, which is, of course, a common theme amongst players in the FIFA 23. You have the space on the edge of the box. You just always have to move the keeper there. No matter what, that's the first thing you do. You have to move the keeper. When there's any angle on, whether it's from a first touch or just a, a ball roll scoop inside, prioritizing moving the keeper whilst maybe your, your teammate presses the, the person in possession is very, very important. But for them, it's another bad start. Great feed from Cafu. XL building nicely, good feet from Gorilla Tom, picking up with Zidane, he tries his best to reverse Elastico himself out of that spot of danger. Just on that goalkeeper movement point, does that come with communication, the duo, or is that just instinct? It's instinct for me. The person who's captain should be moving the goalkeeper for any Travella angle. But to be fair, in that situation, it's very quick and sudden. You kind of have to react very, very um, abruptly whilst always being conscious of um, trying to defend as well. What a ball. Oh my... Oh. Calm and composed there to, to head it back to the goalkeeper. And in the nicest way, it was Pele. Yeah. That, sort <laughs> yeah. Of want, that is the time you want a, a rude hullet. What a win by that is from XL. Mbappe does superbly well. R9 wants more players in this attack. What a ball that could be. It was a clever idea there from Gorilla, who's trying to just tee up the run from Jarzinho. 25 minutes left in this one. They'll be happy to take a 1 0 win. Yeah, it looks as if they've changed as well. I'm not too sure. I think this is a 4-4-2. I'm not really sure what exactly they've changed to here for MGCF, but they've, they've ditched the five back and they've gone and opted to bring a, another attacker. The, the ball was in there to Jorginho. It was great running there from Beretta, I believe it was. 
Time running out for Crepaldi and Barreto. After such a good start, beating their fellow Brazilian Giants by a goal to nil, they'll be disappointed to come and drop three points straight after and not keep that winning momentum behind them. Cafu. Maybe looking for that ball into the box, outside the boot, it goes. Defended just about. I'm guessing that pause has come from the Brazilians. Time for a change. Cheeky chip finds Jarzinho. Switch from side to side, outside the boot. Seems to be the way to play at the moment on FIFA 23. Crossing, shooting. Whichever way you can use that animation, try and use it. It just seems like there's, there's nowhere to go when they're trying to push forward. Every decision seems sort of matched, doesn't it? Yeah, and even there, just not using the right skill moves at the right time, and it results in a loss of possession and uh, just gifting it back to Excel, who can now potentially look to maybe even go slightly defensive. I believe it was approaching towards the 80th minute, so this is time now for MGCS. If they want to go forward and push everybody forward, constant press, direct passing or, or fast build-up, they need to do it now because Time's running out. We saw in the last game with SPQR, they waited until the 88th, 87th minute before they even de decided to, to push forward. And yeah, there wasn't enough time for them to do so. Yeah, well, so far, so good for XL. They're quite happy on that side of the, uh, of the, of, of the pitch there. They're 12 minutes away from three points on the board. In the other game, as we said, TG, NIP are still leading. SPQR by a goal to nil. I think that one started just ever so slightly after this game. So we'll try our best to give you the lowdown as that one crosses to full time. We can't see the opposite side of the screen now. You can see Crapaldi using the controller, probably changing a few things around. If you are in this situation, Ryan, what is the uh, the motto? What in terms of MGCF? For me, it's just you need to make some changes. You need to, to not be afraid to take the risky passes to try and get back into the game because that is sort of the only way you can put Excel on the back foot. Whether it works or it doesn't, you just have to try and be instinctive and, and take the chances and the runs when they come because there have been a few moments where they've triggered the run in behind their space to try and take or a risk and play the pass even though they've already triggered the run and they've turned back. So now these are the times they need to put Excel under, oh, under pressure. Double change, Adama Traore comes up for XL. They could conclude it now, though. Cristiano Ronaldo also introduced to. Fresh legs on the pitch for both sides. Just see that left wing back option. It's just been brought on chasing in packs, though, aren't they, XL? Looking to get the ball back. Alfonso Davies. Back there, that's what I was saying with the, the triggered run where they've got the players committed and then they didn't take the risk. Keep an eye on Ginola. It's queuing up inside the box. Pull it. Jarzini, where's the extra pass going to fall to MGCF, waiting patiently for their time to strike. With time running out, Ginola off the bench to be a hero, and that's exactly what he'll be. Woo. Yes, that was special. If he's met that skill move there, that's incredible. He's chose the, the right angle there to do it. And it's pushed him with the speed boost in on goal, and to find the top corner there is special. But well, it's tough for, for XL in their perspective, but for MGCF, they just now, now's the, the tricky part. Do they carry on going? Because that's the most dangerous they've looked when they've gone forward. They, they've been incredible in that, that one sequence of play. They chose the right pass, they chose the right skill move, the right shot, the right angles, everything was perfect. Do they now go back to what they started the game with in the back five? Do they, do they try and match XL's 4-3-2-1 if they go back to it? it it's, that's where potentially your coach plays his part. I mean, right. In the simplest way, there's there's no extra time here. It's yeah, you're you looking yeah. for a draw here. So what have you really got to lose then yeah. to go and push some more bodies forward? 100%, but then you kind of have to look at it and think the first week is just about getting points on the board. You don't want to be in a situation where we, we were in the same situation where we were drawing against PSG in the first week around the 80th minute and PSG were having a, a good run. They were playing really well. They looked as if they were more likely to score. In those situations, maybe you just take the draw. Well, not necessarily take it, but just be a bit more reserved, a bit more disciplined and not try and push too many bodies forward and be sort of accepting that a point might end up being enough in the final week. So in this case, for me, if I'm Excel, last five minutes, I'm playing last attack. For MGCF, Ryan, for 
quite a poor 80 minutes in this game to turn around and say, look, we just got a point out of that game. Yeah, We're still yeah. unbeaten for the night. Exactly. They're going to be over the moon with that. This is a, a game, this will sort of kick them on to even potentially do even better in the next games. It's a huge boost of confidence knowing that they haven't played incredibly well and it looks as if they could even leave with something. Messi trying to be the magician that many know he is around the footballing world and on the virtual pitch. I've just heard a roar behind me. I think there's been another goal in that TGNIP SBQR game. When we've got the goal, we'll go over there. Added time of one minute in this one. Last attack, last chance at goal for XL. Unfortunately, it's not going to come off. And the points will be shared in round two here in Group A. 84-minute equaliser from MGCF with Crepaldi with a lovely piece of skill and incredible composure. And there you go. Points are split there. One. One, four points on the board for MGC and their opening game in the EA Sports Cup. It will be a point on the board for XL. Yeah, it's it's not the, the great situation for them because you could say that they could have put the game to bed in the first half. But again, you just have to take the points as they come in the first week. Well, there we have round two, halfway done. We heard there was a goal in the other game between TG, NIP and SPQ. The game is still just taking place behind me there in the pit as it stands. Which way did the goal go? I think it has gone the way we hear of TG, NIP. After snatching that last minute equaliser against Complexity, they're looking to get their first win on the board here. Yes, they are. It's a, a goal where the, sort of the decisions were sort of made for you already with the goalkeeper mo movement. He sort of anticipated a shot across goal for SPQR. And, of course, with um, Oladito and Levy, you can't really give those chances up when you when you sort of make the decision for them. They're always going to take it. Yeah, and we have to speak on the opposite side. SPQR, Ryan, two games down, potentially zero points from six. Yeah. Awful start. It's not the best of start for them, but again, there's still a long way to go. They can still come back in this game alone, but there's still two more games where they can brush off and just go back and see what's what's not working for them. Why is it that they... It, well, we haven't really seen a lot of this game. We're just coming into it now. But in the first game, for example, they didn't really look offensively great. And in this game, it doesn't seem as if that they, they've been playing well on the offensive front, nor the defensive front, because they've conceded two goals. But they just need to make sure the game doesn't get out of hand. That's a key situation, because goal difference might end up being something that you rely upon to get through into the, into the, the knockout stages. Well, as we know, they're the only team in this group that there was a slight roster change for this year. It was uh, Rampazzo last year for SPQR. He's been swapped out and in has come Nathan SR22, a great player by his own account. Teaming up with the captain, you could argue, Felipe. Could be in. One more pass. Ooh, that's unlucky. I think the idea was there, yeah. just the conviction of the one more was pretty terrible from R9. Yeah, that's unfortunate from them, but it's a... Uh... It's a glimmer of hope showing that they can push forward, they can create a chance, and that's something that they need to do as they retain possession or retrieve possession, sorry, from the interception there. Another chip ball into the box. I spoke about earlier that being a, a common thing that pro players will look to do this year to switch. Almost was blocked there. Another deflection on the way through that time. Pelo driving forward. I believe that'll be Oli Lito there, finding the feet of Levy David. It should be a, a corner, though. It's gone the way of a goal kick, in fact, into the pause menu we go again. Let's speak very quickly about TG uh, NIP. Team Bullet Ninjas in pyjamas coming together to form a deadly FIFA duo. Last year, we looked at them as one of the, the main staples in 2v2 competitive FIFA. Overall, they didn't have a bad running in both tournaments, the Team yeah. of the Season Cup and the FIFA E Club World Cup. They ended the year pretty strongly, to be honest. It was a top four finish, but by their own accounts, they'll know that they wanted to go and win trophies. Yeah, of course. When you have the, the roster of Olalito and Levy, you always expect them to be in and amongst the best teams or the, the teams in the latter stages of the tournaments. And they've done that at the end of last year, as you said. They're a strong team. They've got a great coach behind them as well in Renzo. But in a 1v1 situation, we know how good they are. They've won their champions. They've won multiple competitions between them. And in a 2v2, they're just waiting for them. Maybe could just take the extra step in this tournament or in the later stages of the FIFA 23 season. But they've got the ability to do it. And they're, they're great guys as well. Alilito probably one of the nicest guys you will find in the FIFA scene, without doubt. Top professional, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, genuinely. He's somebody that you have to admire in the fact that he's very... He's, in terms of, let's say, last season, I'm sure you won't mind me saying, he didn't start off the best in 1v1s. But he's somebody that comes into his own and he's happy to acknowledge if he's not playing well or if he is playing well. 
and the way he can improve. And it's something that I have to respect um, from him. Well, they're 15 minutes away from picking up their first win in Group A. RTG and IP. After a smash and grab draw against Complexity, they'll be looking and saying, you know what, four points from six is not a bad start. After two rounds, they do face the other Brazilian roster. After this one, Team MGCF in round three. Yeah, that'll be a battle of the teams who are currently unbeaten as it stands anyway. It will be both teams on at four points. It's great dribbling there as well. Isabio, unbelievable feat. This is Olilito just steamrolling forward. You need that, though, in the duo. You have to have that player that's just got that bit of nerve, that bit of flair. Eight minutes to create something special here for SBQ up. What do you make of that Maldini pick? Didn't see everyone go for it, still don't see everyone go with it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's all personal preference with defenders. A lot of players will opt towards using Van Dijk or Lucio next to Vieira. I think Vieira is the staple, and that's great movement there as well from Olivito to show for the pass. Down line that? again to Hart. that run? In he goes. David Ginola can't connect with it. That would have been game, set and match, but the SBQ are going to get something from this game. It needs to come now, and it's gone out of play. They just seem out of sync, and maybe it's just because they're a new duo form this year. Maybe they're just not on the same wavelength going forward or defensively, but that will come with time. As I said, this week for them, if they can just look towards increasing performance. And Pretty poor two passes <laughs> in a row, that wasn't yeah. it? From both teams, just giving away possession. Yeah, but I'd be very shocked though if we do see um, Olalito and Levy give away the lead here. For me, when there's a minute added on, even if they do score, you've got possession, it's basically game over and it should seal them joint top of the worrying sign for me with this team of Lunes in Pyjamas team is what they do with this man on the ball in Haaland. One more pass, David Ginola makes it three. First three points on the board, first win in Group A. And a little dance from Oli Lito, who certainly is finding his feet alongside his teammate Levy David. Four points for a possible six after two games, they'll be over the moon with that. Yeah, it was a ruthless bit of play there to try and build up towards the byline, an extra pass, an easy finish to make it 3-0. For Team Hullet's Ninjas in Pyjamas up against SBQR. But just like I was saying, if you can cast your mind back to Copenhagen a few months ago, they loved Wout well, Weghorst, a yeah, tall yeah. player on FIFA. Yeah. Who else is pretty tall on FIFA? And someone argue, very lengthy. That is uh, Erlen Haaland. He won't be a starter in the team, but off the bench, he can cause some havoc. As you just saw there, was the other uh, provider to Ginola. 3-0. They're yeah. going to be over the moon. Four points from six. You can't moan against that on the flips on SBQR. Is it panic stations yet? Zero points on the board. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a, of a weird one how they approach the next games because this will maybe be where the nerves start to settle in because they haven't got any points on the board yet. They'll be desperate to try and kickstart, whether it's even a draw or a win. A win will be perfect to bounce back, but they just need to get some points on the board. Yeah, but one team that just played their first opening fixture here in Group A was XL, and they're joined by our very own Carl Walker right now. Brandon, Ryan, thank you so much. Yes, I am joined by both Tom and Gorilla. After that first game, draw for yourselves to kick things off. You know there's plenty of other games to go this week and in four weeks as well. But Tom, give us your overview of how that game went. KG, in one word, very, very KG. Uh, expected, we always start pretty slow anyway. And MGCF, we knew them from last year. Uh, they played very, very similar to last year as well. So KG game, expected. And yeah, at least now we should build some momentum going forward. Now, Grilla, we were trying to dissect your interview at the very start. I don't know if you saw the video talking about easy teams, and you didn't phrase it saying an easy team. You said the easy teams. Now, maybe I'm just being pedantic. Maybe I'm looking into it too much, OK? The easy teams, who are they? Come on, who are you thinking about when you said that? I never said that. I said you said the easy teams. Come on. I said if you want to win the tournament, you can't play the easy teams. So who are the easy teams? I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> OK, all right, I won't push you too much. Maybe over the next few weeks, they'll reveal themselves or you'll reveal them when you play against them. No, but in all seriousness, this group here, you've got two Brazilian teams. You've got Complexity as well as uh, TG, NIP and yourselves. Plenty of talent, plenty of success and plenty of players that have done it not just online, but at LAN. 
here we are again, all in the room. It's been like this for some time, and it feels like that momentum, that feeling, that's back in here. Yeah, I mean, I love events, especially 2v2, playing with Tom, having that same experience. It's a lot different to, to 1v1. It's a bit of a pain to deal with sometimes, but I love it. You know, competing is, is something that I've been doing for a long time now, and being live events, you can't match it. So talk us through what's uh, about to come, hopefully for this evening and for your next matchup. What are you thinking? What's going through your head, Tom? More goals. I want to score some goals. I think me and Sven had a lot of like half chances in the first game where if we made the right decision, we would have scored. And I think the, the best way we can play is attack. I mean, he's always been known for the way he attacks and I can kind of just compliment that. So hopefully in the next couple of games, you'll see a few more goals rolling in. Hopefully I'm looking forward to that. And one man that's looking forward to it so we can break them all down, Mike LaBelle. And I'm sure Ivan and Rachel, they want more goals as well. Thanks, Carl. I thought we were going to get something out of him there. I really thought we were going to hear who these easy teams were. Keep pushing him. Keep pushing him. His face turned red. Yeah. He felt it. You saw that, right? Rewind glad, the clip. I'm glad the kit wasn't ready. It would have blended in there, wouldn't it? But um, picking up on what Tom was saying, slow burners there don't always start well. Surely in this new kind of, I guess, way we're going, especially as a one, one leg, they need to start quicker and get these goals from kickoff. Yeah, definitely, and I think they have an advantage from the point of view that the game that they don't play, the round they don't play, was round one. So they have no break between their games. They're playing round two, three, four, and five. So even if they start slow, they don't need to start slow twice. So only one time, and hopefully they kick on from, from well, now. Hopefully that works for them. They got a draw in their opening matchup, Mike, and I know you're going to break it down for us right now in the analysis presented by PlayStation Tournaments. Indeed, I am. And we're going to talk about this counterattack. You forced a mistake. It's kind of route one football to a certain degree, but it's what you do with it here. And you've got your best player, your target man. Everyone's using R9 for a reason. Wins the 50-50. And you see Pelly kind of coming into frame here. And what I love is, in this freeze frame in particular, you're going to take that touch because it's not going to get blocked. You can gather yourself. You get to watch the defender, see what needs to happen, and you can pick a corner out. You always have to have that goalkeeper glance. You see the finish there, and it allows them to have that opener. Even though MGCF did make a comeback here, and credit to them, it's, it's, it's definitely something that it puts you in the driver's seat, so to speak. And, and it's something that's so important. We're going to see more and more trying to target R9 as much as possible. Were you impressed by how Excel did start, though? I mean, I think going 1-0 in the best of one is what you want. It's, it's all you want. You know, the next step is defending constant pressure. And MGCF turned on constant pressure, managed to make it 1-1. Excel played last attack, but 1-1 it ended. Yeah, and MGCF obviously know how to start well and finish well now after those two opening fixtures for them. Well, let's just uh, confirm the results from round two then. So Team Hullet Ninjas in pyjamas, it was quite a one-sided affair for them over SPQR Brazil, 3-0 in the end. And then we just saw that one. It was one all XL MGCF Esports. Let's have a look at how that looks on the table after two rounds. Some of these teams, remember, have only played one matchup so far. So Team Hullet Ninjas in pajamas on four points. MGCF also on four points. Maximum they can get now is 10, which would actually match focus from last week as well. XL won, they've only played one game. Complexity on one. And SPQR Brazil, zero points so far after two rounds for them. Well, these are the next fixtures, so if you look across at the top, XL, Complexity Gaming, I can't wait for that one, and Team Hullet Ninjas in Pajamas taking on MGCF Esports. Two massive fixtures there, but the one we're going to focus on is XL, as a world champion, Gorilla, and a Premier League champion in Tom. They're taking on, though, aren't they, this team, the former world champions from 2019. Team Complexity Gaming. Only one will come out with three points. Or will it be split? We'll have to wait and see after this short break. Handshaking.
Well, welcome back to London for the EA Sports Cup. And I've got a very special guest joining me for the very first time in the commentary booth. This hasn't happened before. Hopefully, happens many times in the future. Mr. Dr. Nightwatch, Ivan, flowed in fresh from Bulgaria for today. How are you, first and foremost? And are you looking forward to a bit of, uh, bit of comms? Very well, thank you. Yeah, looking forward to some, some casting, some opening, some closing of the show. So, looking forward to some gameplay and... Uh Debuting. And what a game we've got coming up, by the way. Round three is upon us, and it sees Excel against Complexity. But let's talk a bit about Complexity, Ivan, because they have been 2v2 world champions before, not once, but twice. During that COVID era online, they were great. And also, before that, Alain, one of the last sort of 2v2 lands pre the pandemic, they were there and they were performing superbly well, weren't they? Yeah, definitely. I think when 2v2 came up, they were the first team that showed how it was like to play 2v2. With uh, back then the new tactics available in, in, in the year's game, they were the best team to do it. Max, Joxan, they had different responsibilities. I remember Max clutching up the penalty shootout, so it's all about the teamwork. Yeah, no, you can't forget the, the individual accolades both of these two have had on the biggest of stages as well. Joxan clutching up a lot in his time. He's been to FIFA E World Cups as well and experienced the highest of highs in the FIFA scene. But you're right, it was back in Milan where they won that FIFA E Club World Cup on a penalty shootout. Do you think that gives them an added advantage, Ivan? Because they have been together as a duo for so long. And how do they bounce back from last season as well? Because last season, by their own standards, was, was pretty poor. I think it helps being kind of coming off of a bad season because you're kind of the underdog. There's no pressure on you. Whereas Tom and Gorilla, they also come off a bad season, but they don't have the accolades that Complexity do. They're world champions. They won the Club World Cup in NA, whereas Excel, they need to prove themselves this year. Well, let's have a look at this squad that XL are using. And I mean, you're the man to talk about this, Ivan. As a, as a pro yourself, as a top-level FIFA player, I mean, 10 of the 11 players in this team are icons. If you had to build your own 11, what are you changing in that team? Or are you saying, right, copy and paste? There's one player I'm not seeing, and that's Vir Virgil van Dijk. He's on the bench, but I think you need to have him. Hands down, the best defender in Ultimate Team, in my opinion. He's unplayable. It's someone you have to have in your starting 11. And we were having a bit of a discussion backstage about this. It was Virgil van Dijk, the pick over him. Comparisons quickly, if you can, off the top of your head to those maybe at home. What is Virgil van Dijk offering you that maybe Maldini just doesn't, in your opinion? Strength, reach, and Virgil van Dijk tax. There you go. You heard it from the man. Virgil van Dijk over Maldini. Maldini has features a lot more, but I guess it's all, it's all personal preference at the end of the day. 100%, and I think it's more affordable as well. At home, you can play with Van Dyke more than you can with a Maldini or Vieira, so I think also people are used to playing with Van Dyke at home. I think that's what you should use at events. Well, we haven't got long until we get this one underway. Round three, these are two teams that are yet to taste their first victory here in the EA Sports Cup. Obviously a draw for complexity in that opening game, which would have hurt them very much. Oh, and for XL, they conceded late on into the tie, and they also found themselves dropping a few points. I'm sure, I'm sure you saw that one, Ivan, backstage. What on earth happened in that game for Complexity? Because, what, there was two minutes left in there. I think they might not have had the kickoff, which was probably the reason why. But you don't go and throw away a 1-0 lead with two minutes left in the game. You don't, but it's easier said than done, right? You can say the same thing about 2-0 leads, 3-0 leads, but once that constant pressure tactic is activated, it's so, so hard to keep a lead. And uh, we've seen it both with XL Com Complexity. Both teams 1-0 up. Finish 1-1. One, one. Could see a chance early doors from Complexity. Didn't take them long, did it? Four minutes on the clock. And Maxi with the finish of Mbappe. What a start from the only North American representation here in the EA Sports Cup for this FIFA 23 year. Talk me through that goal. Lovely build-up. They're on for a second here. It's very much a, a case of we're getting in your face and we're ready to score some goals. I think... What? I'll tell you what, it might not last very long. <laughs> Oh, my days. What a start. Seven minutes in. I score, you score. I was about to let you down break... I was, about, I was about to let you break down the first goal, Ivan. You might as well talk to me about both of them. I didn't want to talk too soon because I saw Excel on the attack and I figured they might make it 1-1. Seventh minute, two goals already. And already we've seen the score that Excel and Complexity had in the first two games. And um, I think if Complexity kept the 1-0 lead, it would have been a lot of pressure on XL, especially so early on, you're very likely to concede a second, and then it's kind of the constant pressure coin flip. Whereas now 1-1, one, one, I think XL might actually have like the, the mental advantage, right? Like they, they've conceded, but kicked straight back, so. I think the biggest thing in that movement there, Ivan, is how quickly they scored. 100%. If that goes on, what, 30, 40 in-game minutes, you start to just 
give complexity maybe that edge. I think this game seems to be a little more messy, so to speak, for 2v2 or for at least what we've seen so far. We've seen, except the NIP SPQR game, which was one-sided, which was 3-0, we've seen 1-1s and 1-0s. Whereas here, seven minutes in, already 1-1. I think we're kind of in for a goal fest. Well, the two highest goal score, uh, score lines we've seen in the EA Sports Cup, last week was 4-1. The week before that was 6-1 from Ducks Cameron. I mean, they're a rarity seeing those results. You might be right, Ivan. Maybe we are in for a magical game here. Here's Mbappe now driving forward. This is Joxan with that blue player icon above his head. Maxi does well, finds the feet of Arnaud. This is Joxan. It was time red. He still needed to pull a good save out from Van der Sar. I think the thing that helps also excel score goals, or in theory it should, is that I saw them playing 4-3-2-1, which is a very attacking formation. Obviously it defends in 4-4-2, so it gives you some stability at the back. But in terms of scoring goals, especially if you master the formation, you are very likely to score, but also likely to concede on the counter, because when playing that formation, you likely have a fullback pushing up, and that leaves you susceptible to, to concede more goals. Saw a few times there for complexity, how good they've been at just pressing that ball down and getting those triggers right, so to speak, of when to win back the ball. Didn't mean to curse them there as Ambrotta does just get dispossessed. Again, you can see, you can see the right back pushing forward for uh, for Excel. Zambrotta running behind Zidane, tracking back. The the wing is always going to be open and they can score. Building nicely again, jogs out with R9. That should go, no, it's gone for a goal kick. And again, it all starts from that freed up space from Zambrotta. He helps in the attack, he gives you a, kind of a numer numerical advantage, I should say. Um, but on the counters, you need kind of Zidane, your right center mid, to cover manually at the, at the right back spot. And uh, I, think, I think we're going to see at least four goals this game. Four goals? At least. Especially when constant pressure gets activated. Uh, it's one of those where you're either going to score on a counter or you're going to concede. Just in terms of formations as well, Nightwatch, we had a conversation with Ryan Pessoa about this across the last two games. It's a question of, are we going to see one standout formation or are we just going to see such a, a mix-up across tonight, do you think? I think the main two formations that are played are the 5-2-1-2, which we saw MGCF playing. And I noticed they're actually playing Zidane at camp because you want him to help out defensively in the middle of the pitch. And uh, the 4 3 2 1 that Excel are playing. Those are kind of the meta formations. You could see the occasional 4 triple 2 4 4 2, but I think 4 3 2 1 might be better for, for 2 v 2. Cafu tries his best to whip that one into the box, into the down. The chance still could be alive for Excel. Pull it from distance. He maybe fancy one of those power shots. Exactly, I was just going to focus on the, the power shots. I think I saw it in one of the previous rounds where off a free kick. Uh, I believe maybe MGCF tried a power shot. Um, and it's not so easy to see because they have the zoom turned off. Obviously at pro level we, we tend to turn it off. But it's really effective, especially if you're green and you have enough time. It's 99% a goal if it's on target. Well, we said it reminds me a bit of like a game breaker back in the days of FIFA Street. No one is, uh, is stopping that if it's on target. One thing I'm not seeing is Haaland off the bench, which is surprising to me because I think he wins a lot of headers, and especially in the XL formation, to cross right now, back post, if he's in the box, back post, regardless who he's, who he's facing, it's, he's winning the header. Either score a goal or assist. But he, no was, he was introduced a few times, I'd say last 15 minutes or so, and he, he has made an impact. He did, this, I think, assist one of the, the winning goals for TG NIP last game. And I think you're right, he does just offer you that, that frame, but I guess from a, a pro mindset, that striker position is sort of gold, really, isn't it? It's the case of who's getting it, Mbappe or R9, or obviously both of them. Yeah, I guess when you have these accounts, you're less likely to play Haaland, obviously, because you have the likes of Cruyff and Ginola as a sub, but he offers something that those players don't. Charzinho now, building nicely complexity. Looking for the last chance of the first half. 1-1 one, one is the score so far in round three of games. Nice turn from the Brazilian icon, Maxi. Looking for the cutback for his teammate in Joxan. Added time to follow of nothing, I believe. And that will do us for the halfway point. XL 1, Complexity 1. But I think the biggest point of this game, Nightwatch, is you're right. It was how they responded, XL, because they could have come into halftime at 1-0 down. It would have been a very different storyline. 100%. And if the second half starts the same way the, the first half started, I think 
the team that concedes will have a lot of issues. I think constant pressure will be obviously turned on around the 70th minute. But it's one of those where you can't afford to start the same way you started in the first half. Yeah, well, also, as you can just see behind us, there is another game taking place. That is Team Hill at Ninjas in Pyjamas taking on MGCF. It's SBQR that is sitting out of that round. Speaking of them, they need the break now because they've got zero points from six in total. That is the uh, the worst possible start for the Brazilian side. I think it doesn't help that it's a new duo, so you've had less time to practice than the other teams, and it shows directly. Well, here's the stats at half time here between Excel and Complexity. Not a lot to go by. I mean, some would argue quite an even contested game so far. Yeah, the stat that probably stands out the most in terms of difference is the passes. Excel with 56, whereas Complexity with 84. I think you, you can make an argument that Excel rely more on kind of dribbling, individual quality, whereas Complexity, they have the teamwork in terms of passing and, and collaborating. I love that tactic ball there from uh, Coach Javi in the XL dugout. Hopefully we'll see a few magnets and drawings on that as we uh, we move forward to the further rounds this evening. Remember, both these two teams are looking for their first win in the tournament. Both opened up, played with a draw. Actually, the same scoreline as well, both 1-1. One, one. I think towards the end of the game, if one of the teams is in the lead, you'll always have that in the back of your mind. I was one goal up last game. Am I going to keep the lead? Am I going to concede? I can't do that two games in a row because then I'm not in a good position for, for next rounds. And whenever I take the lead, it kind of plays in the back of my head. So I think the next goal, if there is one, obviously, but I think the next goal is very, 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 very important mentally for both teams. They're in a very, very similar position. Um, two duos that have played last year didn't have the greatest of years com compared to what was expected of them. Obviously, top eight at, uh, at the World Cup for XL is a very good achievement. But considering it's Tom and Gorilla, right? E-Prem champion, World Cup champion, you expect more. They expect more from themselves. If you watched um, the World Cup, you would see, you would know. You would see their reactions, they know it themselves. And complexity. Um, world champions, they expect more of themselves as well. So. Pressure is on both teams. Shots for either team there. Didn't come to anything. XL out the, the blocks here. There's a lack of support there as Jarzinho is just out of position ever so slightly. Bo Carlos actually gets the nod this game. Keep an eye on that run from Hula that he just teased there. We've seen that happen quite a few times tonight, Ivan. That tease run from Hula. He just offers you that extra question mark that normally. I mean, you can't defend it, to be honest. If the ball's going through to him, you're in trouble. Great feet, this is building up nicely. Maldini just about does enough with players around him. Well played there, Tom. Great composure. Yeah, in terms of Hullet, I think Ryan mentioned it in one of the previous games. It's, uh, it's a danger. If you see Hullet running forwards, there is no way you ignore it because as soon as the ball is on his head or in his feet, it's very likely to be a goal. And if you focus too much on it, there's a lot of space in the, in the middle of the pitch. So you can't win. Zidane. Good see. Edge of the box. This could be dangerous. Mbappe! Great save, Anderson. And here comes a corner from XL, which they made look quite interesting in their last game. What are we going to see here? From Tom and Gorilla. It's Tom over the corner. Just keep an eye on that player moving in the boxes between Hullet and Vieira just teasing where is the ball going to go it goes into Hullet and it goes into the back of the goal I mean at pro level we know it's a very 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 effective tactic one thing that surprised me here is that complexity did not touch their goalkeeper usually you see two things either you take the goalkeeper and you move him kind of near post to stop the direct corner or you take the keeper and you put him kind of further away to stop this cross, and it's kind of mind games. Am I going to concede directly? Am I going to concede a header? But they didn't touch the goalkeeper at all. They relied on just stopping the header. And we know FIFA 23, these crosses and headers are very, very effective. And I think Tom knows it as well. Tom did not expect that to go in. You can see him him laughing after that, that goal. So it's one of those where now pressure's on complexity. And if you are defending that, Night watch. You saw it for a split second. It was Gorilla there that was just jumping between the two. It's Vieira Hullet, Vieira Hullet. Who's going to run the ball? Is he defending that? Is it just a guessing game of which play you try and chase? I think you kind of have to mark the zone. You can't afford to, to mark the player. Uh, you mark the zone. And if it goes back post, then it's likely something that's, I would say, off the training ground, maybe. 
Um, but you'll see here. Hullet is marked by two players, but the cross is very he, he's effective. He's marked by Hullet. Yeah, literally. But the attacker always kind of has an advantage in these kind of scenarios. And again, they didn't move keeper. Even if you move him near post, be at least a bit closer to, to the to the player that's going to head the ball or closer to the cross uh, without leaving your near post open for a direct, I would say, corner to, to score a goal. But they didn't do either. They relied on, on covering Hullet and it didn't work out for them. And as we said, 2-1, 66 minute, two questions. Have they gone constant pressure already? And are XL going to kind of panic considering what, what happened last round? 23 minutes away, you're all right on that. No, I was absolutely, they were in a lead in their last game, XL, but were able to hold on to it. Same for complexity, to be completely honest. What will change now in terms of tactics? Or will there be an instant response from complexity that win a free kick here? which could be very dangerous, just outside the box. It is Joxam that is over it. Are we seeing a direct shot? I think we will be. I would go far post here. No, Joxam play short. And Bappe off the line by Hullet. Still could be alive this chance for complexity. But did they make the right decision, Ivan? I think too many players in the box, especially when you put a player on the line. If you play it short, you know that you have to pick the perfect pot, the perfect pocket of space. And I don't think I don't think there was one. Honestly, there was a player on the line, the keeper. And when you put a player on the line, the whole kind of team drops back to cover as well. So you have even more players. I think what I would have done here is probably shoot far post from where the goalkeeper was moved, and hope it goes over the the player on the line. But I don't know. They decided to play short, which you can also see from the animation. So Excel were kind of ready. They had some time to react, and I think that was a very very good chance to score. But now they're waiting for the pause for constant pressure, and I don't think Excel is going to give them a pause in the next 10 in-game minutes. Hello, into R9, just offside is Mbappe. This is nice from Excel, looking for a third goal to conclude the game completely. Moving it very well, back to goal. Jardinio versus Elastico. Does do well, gets a big block of Virgil van Dijk, someone that you're a, a huge fan of, just proving his worth again in this team. He's indispensable. I don't understand how you can play without Virgil van Dijk, especially on these accounts. I think the accelerate meta, so to speak, the lengthy meta, uh, alongside his stats, his stature, his kind of build, he's much, much needed. And Excel, uh, complexity. They got their pause by giving the ball away, but I think constant pressure is getting activated right now. And question is, are you winning those 50-50s in the air? Are you getting those tackles in? Are you conceding on a counter or are you going to get the ball back, tackle? And I think constant press offers you very good counter attacks. Is it time for Haaland as well on the flip side? Six minutes left. Are you looking for an outlet maybe? I think Haaland is good for Excel right now. So you can kind of chip the ball on his head, bring it down and have a counter attack in on net. Especially if uh, you're playing against Cafu. I see a lot of players and a lot of teams using Cafu on these accounts. He's, he has very good stats, but obviously he doesn't have the height. He doesn't have jumping to kind of play against Haaland. So you can so, sort of just so we'll sort of bully him, really, can't you, towards the back post? Especially if especially if you're Haaland. Not even back post, just to get out of pressure. You're getting sworn by attackers and midfielders. All you do is just chip it towards Haaland. You know he's going to win the header and just be ready for the, for the knockdown. On the side of XL, it's a case of, look, there's eight minutes left in this game. We've got a huge chance at three points on the board. If you're in this position, another goal or let's just keep the ball? I think considering what happened last game, you want to keep the ball as good as possible, but it's one of those where if you keep the ball, if you want to keep the ball and you concede, why don't I go for a goal? If you go for a goal and you concede, why don't I keep the ball? So it's a 50-50. Um, I know it's Adama. Uh, Come on, he's going to offer a lot of pace there. They've been dispossessed though, complexity. Quite poor in the attack. It's a win back nicely there for XL. Vieira doing his job at the back. Now they could break with numbers forward, which naturally will be the case where complexity are trying to put more bodies forward. CR7 comes on, not good enough in the air there. Cafu, just about right place, right time. Able to win the ball there. Yusebio, he's come on to try and shake up this attack. Complexity looking for an equaliser. Pele! Maxi with another goal. We said it. We said it. One goal up, last minutes of the game, we saw it in Complexity's game, we saw it in Excel's game, and now we see it in the Complexity Excel game. So, 2-2, what do you do now?
Are you satisfied going with only one point out of this game for the second game in a row if you're XL? Or do you go for a goal? Just looking back on that replay, Grilla there, playing it back to himself. As you can see there. They can't two, be happy. Two. I mean, if we had to be clinical in that area, what's that come down to? Just someone not tracking the runner, or is it just a, a moment of brilliance? I think when you have the extra pass, as we just saw with Pele, it's kind of a um, kind of mind games. Are you going far post or near post? Or are you shooting on Pele's left foot? Because are you taking these chances as an attacker? I would, considering like the minute and the scenario. But as a defender, maybe you think he's not going to shoot. He's going to shot cancel turn. Maybe he's going to go far post, near post. There was no keeper movement either, so maybe they didn't expect the shot. Um, but either way, it's 2-2, and I think Excel are going to play last attack again. Big question, Ivan. Another goal or a draw? I think it's a draw. I think it's a draw. I don't think Complexity are going to go constant pressure. Tell you Excel what, last you said four goals in this game. You've delivered there. Yeah. You can come back again on commentary and give us more <laughs> predictions. I think they're going last attack, and um, Complexity, I don't think, are scoring a goal. question is... Are XL going to have the chance? They didn't last time, but now they might. Look at the time on the screen. Added time left. XL after a goal. And Cristiano Ronaldo trying to be that hero. Fortunately, not able to deliver the all important finish. 2 2 ends here. Another draw as XL and Complexity go back to the drawing board again and into round four, still looking for that first win. The good thing though, Nightwatch, XL face SBQR, a team that have not also got any points on the board so far. Double-edged sword, because now you know I have to win this game. They have zero points, we don't have a win. But if you don't win that game, I think that's when the pressure is, is at its peak. Yeah, I mean, 2-2 two, two in that game. <sighs> it's a tough one for both of those two teams. Yes, we're both unbeaten, but we're just lacking that big three points on the board. Would you say that was a fair result overall? Half time, the team, both teams look pretty fair as well. I think so. I don't, I don't recall any big chance that you can say, oh, they missed, they should have scored, they, they should have not scored. So it's one of those where 2-2, you're not happy, but it's a fair result. Yeah, and that game you just saw there conclude between us, Team Hullet, uh, Ninjas in Pyjamas against uh, MGCF Esports. We'll give you a score update, I can assure you, when we go back uh, down to Rachel Mike for the halfway point uh, breakdown. But three games down here, has anyone really sort of ran away with it as of yeah, I don't think no one really has. I mean, results have been mixed. I mean, Team Hullet Ninjas in Pyjamas have delivered as we thought they were, and I think they're the only team that have had a 3-0 result that have looked convincing at one point this evening. But then again, they did play SPQR. And we are saying that they're the only team that's not played before. So yep. they, they're, I would say, the underdogs. But NIP still have a lot to prove. Four points out of two games is a lot, but I don't. it's far from enough. Well, the team that did get an equaliser in that game were Complexity, and they're joined by Carl Walker right now to catch up on their thoughts after that game. Brandon, Ivan, thank you so much. Yes, I am joined by Team Complexity. I mean, you just said it to me there, Maxi. It's been some... Close games uh, so far today. Another close one for yourselves just there. How important was that equaliser, not just for that game, but for your tournament and for the season? I mean, it's huge because if Excel win that, then they'll obviously get like a three-point gap on us, and then we're missing out on one point. And you saw like how close the groups are. So one point is like could easily be the difference between getting grouped and getting out. And Joxan, we were sat in the back, me and Ryan Pessoa, talking about the gameplay, dissecting that game that we were watching. And he was talking about how good both of you are in attack and how he said you are one of the best that he's seen so far this season in 2v2. Is that something you've worked on, that attack and making sure you're so strong that even when you are 2-1 down, you can pull it back and you can get that all-important equaliser? I think we we've been uh, working on our attack like this past, this this FIFA. Um, in previous FIFAs, like we've been like really good defensively, but we've been working on our attack a lot this year. So hopefully it pays off. We know how successful you've both been over the years, and especially last year as well. But probably didn't end the season how you wanted to. Is that still sat there? Is that not burning your way, but you're using that as fuel in a way to make sure that you come back this season? Yeah, for sure, because there was expectation on us to do good, and then. When we did, I mean, we finished last in the group. Like, we both had a conversation. We were like, we can't ever allow ourselves to not prepare like that again and do that poorly. So this season we've been grinding. I mean, we came here early to prepare. So we'll see. Hopefully we're, we're not going to have a repeat of that. 
Hopefully you won't. Well, good luck for the rest of the season. I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do here in London and then across the entire season as well. One man that's really happy. He is Team NA. He said it was a bit of a bias, but after that game, how can you not be? Mike LaBelle and Rachel Stringer. Yeah, thanks, Carl. It was an honest answer, actually, wasn't it, from Maxi? I remember him tweeting after the World Cup saying, really disappointed with where he finished. He just mentioned it there, obviously, bottom of that group. For them to come back, two draws so far in their opening two fixtures. Are they happy with that? I don't know about really happy. I think Kyle maybe have given a little bit of a stretch, but it feels right because they were ahead, gave up a late goal in their opener. Now they're able to get a late goal there to equalize. Maybe you have some mixed feelings, but at least you're saying we haven't dropped the game yet. And I believe that what Maxi said is super important, and we're going to see this in the groups where that one draw, whether it's even taking points off somebody, will lead to the top two situating and being able to, to kind of come down to the wire because it's going to be close. It's inevitable. The way that this works, all these competitors have been training for this, and the system shifted a little bit with the 3-1 the nothing, basically with the single games, the one-offs. And slightly unlucky against two top teams as well in Team Hullet, Ninjas in Pajamas and XL there. So mixed results from the boys from North America. On the other side of the pit as well, it was another draw, uh, nil nil in that one. Let's have a look at a couple of... Uh, Highlights, chances, what are we going to call them? Highlights from that one, Mike. Let's call it 50-50s. Right place at the right time. <laughs> Goalkeeper's coming out, not able to quite take that down. Got the chance at the rebound. How do you miss from there? You have to ask yourself. You see the reaction, reaction from Barreto saying the same thing that I've got as a sentiment. Another layoff, fumbles around the box. Maybe not the easiest on the eyes. And that's really the decider is going to be how clinical are you? How do you take those moments? And when you get in those positions, it comes down to that extra skill, maybe a little bit of luck, maybe some way to break up the play. You have to have some of these intricacies. I mean, nil-nil for two semi-finalists as well at the World Cup. They probably wanted to play each other just to see if they played each other in the same semi-final, what the result would have been. Well, and you could also say with this group in particular, and we've now been here three consecutive weeks, this has not been a high-scoring affair. Mm. There's no one or no tag team partnership that jumps off the page saying these guys are scoring a bunch of goals. It just really hasn't been part of the narrative today. Well, that hopefully will change for week Well, four. I'm going on commentary, and last time that happened, a lot of goals were scored, a lot of goals were conceded. Mike Lavelle then bringing the goals when he commentates. Well, let's have a quick wrap-up then and see where that uh, takes every team in terms of the standings. So some of them have played three matches, some of them only two. Team Hullet, Ninjas in Pajamas on five points, MGCF five, Excel Complexity both on two, SPQR Brazil, Still at the bottom of the table on zero. They've got a big match ahead of them, haven't they? They've got a couple of good matches. They've only played two, so two more. They could easily get six points. And they've got to feel hopeful. They just had a game off, which I think was important. They weren't really in the best run of form. But you're saying, if I get a win here, I'm already knocking on the door of making a little bit of an argument at the end of the day. <laughs> well, maybe we'll see a change in fortunes for the other Brazilian team, SPQ. Well, there's two, of course, tonight. Well, up next, round four. XL taking on that team we've been talking about, SPQR Brazil, and that is your feature matchup up next. These guys will want three points. They've had a couple of one points on the board, and these guys want something. They want a result to take into round four. This matchup is coming your way in a couple of moments' time. The EA Sports Cup is presented by PlayStation Tournaments. 
Welcome back. I'm here, commentary duo, myself, Ryan, high energy. And I call this kind of the nitty gritty. This is the yep. big moment of every single week. You were here yet last week competing, yep. not here on the commentary desk. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Because I feel like you're either taken away from the day saying I did really well yeah. or uh, I, I was left hanging. I really didn't deliver. Our team didn't deliver. Yeah, it kind of depends on the situation you're in. We've seen with Excel, they've drawn two games. SPQR have zero points. The other teams have one and drawn as well. So especially if you're SPQR, you want to get points on, a, on the board. You don't want to leave here with zero. That's going to be something that's going to be hard to, to redeem. And do you feel it was nice that they had a break? Because they started yeah. the day kind of rough. They were, they were the only team that doesn't have anything on the board, like you yeah. were saying. And they had a break, so they're coming off, being able to talk to the coaching staff, maybe work out those nerves a little bit, and now try to bounce back. Yeah, I think that's going to help them a lot. As we said, they started off. They haven't scored a goal yet. They've conceded, I believe it's three in total. So the games haven't gone their way in the results nor the performance. So they need to pick up now. And that break, as you said, they had time just to relax a little bit, maybe watch their opponents, maybe practice another game to see if they can maybe improve offensively because I think that's where they're lacking a lot. And and that's going to be our featured match, of course. You've got Excel with Tom and Gorilla, a lot of success there. And then SPQR, who we were just talking about, has been struggling today. And you got to say, the expectation is really high for Tom and Gorilla. Anytime they get together individually as a collective, I always expect them to kind of be in the finals, to always be advancing. They say they need to score more goals. We really haven't seen that just yet, as we do see them scoring some of the goals from those past success stories. Yes, of course. They're players that have a lot of success in a 1v1 scene. They're both champions. They've both won tournaments in the FIFA Global Series, so they know what it takes, and they've, they've had their hands on trophies. But in the 2v2, I think they would say that they've not perform to the levels that they would uh, hold themselves accountable to. But again, this year, this is the year where Gorilla says they want to get the trophies, that, especially in 2v2 and the performances for them. They need to start off well. And two points out of two games isn't ideal, but it could be a lot worse. Well, and it also keeps the competition close to a yeah, certain yeah. degree. Yeah. If you get a draw, sure, you're only getting that one point, but so is the, the exactly. other team that you're exactly. going up against. Yep. And you see the countdown already triggered behind us. This game is incoming. This is crucial for both, both teams both here. Teams. You Massive. don't want to be going into yeah. the last game. No points, no goals. You can't say yeah. you've been doing anything yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And on the reverse end, a couple draws is cool, but you're really not making that big of a dent. Yeah, I always say for the first week, it's just getting points on the board and just not being too far away from a qualification spot, which, of course, is top two. And as it stands, two teams, MGCF and Team Hullet Ninja Pajamas, look to be pulling away, but it's just down to these two teams now. They have to get points over each other. A win here would be pivotal for, for either of these teams. And as we get into this, has been any surprises in terms of squad changes or adjustments? I mean, you were competing last week. We're yeah. seeing everybody get a little more time with the game. Yeah, I think that's going to help a lot of teams, especially for us. We got to see what teams are doing in the first week. And of course, the teams this week got to see the second week and the first week. So. It's going to help as the, the season progresses. Fantastic skill move there from XL. With that new skill, the new heel to heel, which is very, very efficient in and around the area. So last week, you were mentioning Dalla Mike for focus. They scored a lot of goals against us using that skill move, and it was very effective for them. It's got to be said, Dolmai just like he, he might have been a touch above everyone of some of the skill move execution. And one of the best times to score is off a kickoff and then on the reverse end. Beautiful oh. downward motion. Oh. Van Der Sark gets just a glove onto it. And you see the first pause cued here. Uh, and I was just going to say, we've seen a lot of action within the first 15 or 20 minutes in most of these matches. And then somehow yeah. it slows down. It slows down a lot, yeah. We saw that in, in the, the last game with Excel against Complexity, of course. Two goals in the first 10 minutes. And then after that, there wasn't really too much until the latter stages of the second half. But... That's a bright start from SPQ. I know it didn't result in a goal, but because I've, I've been able to watch their games, um, their first two games today, they didn't look like scoring at all. To me, that's the most threatening they've looked, and it's led to a corner, and we've seen how effective corners can be in FIFA 23. And that has to be part of the team talk. When you're sitting back there, you're watching a game saying, we've got to be more decisive. We have to go forward. As you see, the short corner here with Ronaldo, looking for options, not quite with the skill move, and you're going to have yeah. a bit of a reset. Very interesting that they've opted for a short corner. I think that's the wrong choice, of course, it remains to be seen how comfortable they are with direct corners. But with direct, they even had a direct free kick in the first game today. And they played it short. It just seems a little bit, for me, it's a wasted chance because you could either go direct with a free kick and in a corner situation, you can even go direct or, or swing in a power cross. A space opens up here. Mbappe, a little bit of a drag back. Cancellation, R9, can't find the space. And Rude Hullet feels back to me, Ryan. He, yeah. The way that he gallops <laughs> through the midfield, he chases back, he wins the headers. He does a little bit of everything. Yeah, it kind of made me think going home now, he might be the, the player to, to look to as, as the marquee in the team. And we're going to take a look at the other match as well. We have MGCF facing off against Complexity, of course. Also nil-nil, we got Pele working. Ooh, 
Green time. Goalkeeper doesn't scoop, beats it home on the near post, and you have that opening goal. Yep, green time finish in at the near post. You could argue that the keeper should be saving that. Or you'd expect him to not get beaten at the near post, but it was calm and composed in possession anyway. They could have they could have played the extra pass, they could have done a skill move, but they opted for the green. And I know you'll be happy as the, the one the one team from North America. It's all we got is a representative. <laughs> I am happy, what can I say? But they've done this time and time again yeah. today. They haven't been able to close it out. Yeah, to me, as I was saying, I think they're one of the best teams going forward we've seen offensively. They seem to create a lot of chances and make the right choices at the right moments. It's a key interception there from SPQ Brazil. We've heard another roar around. I'm very interested to see where that goal will come from. And here's a replay. R9 with that extra pass again. Pele, way too much time, way too much space. And we haven't seen them extend a lead today like yeah. that, 2-0. We really haven't seen that from any of the competitors. Every game's been pretty cagey. I don't like saying that, I don't like sitting on fences, but it's just been a reality. Yeah, and it's been Pele again, the, the marquee player, the, the man of the moment for complexity. Max and Jogs and getting that goal there to make it 2-0, as we see build up here from Excel. Saw some usage of the player lock trying to set up the Travella shot. and. I don't know about you, Ryan, but I feel that the player lock is also more relevant or maybe more prevalent and more effective in FIFA 23, especially in 2v2s, comparatively to previous years. Yeah, I think you see it a lot more. Someone like Gorilla uses it a lot in the 1v1, so he's kind of... It's very, very effective in a 1v1 situation. Oh, space to work with. R9 can't quite push through. Maldini stepping through. We didn't see Maldini in action that much last week. Just throwing it out there. Green time block there. Yeah, we didn't. He wasn't the player that players use. I'm not sure I even played a team with him, but are we, we going to see a whipped in corner here? Or are they going to play short? Surely you have to go for it. I'm with you. Go for the knockdown, especially in 2v2. You've got to disrupt what's happening. Yeah. Organized chaos or havoc can be very beneficial because there's so much happening simultaneously on the near post, and that's too safe. Yeah. Way too safe. At least they went for it this time. It was a, a corner. It, they, it just doesn't seem natural to them. They don't seem comfortable with the corners. Maybe that's not something they've worked on. Jazina with the run. This could be played in. It's a great block there to stop that happening. And I was just going to say, when you're talking about set pieces and corner kicks, is some of that come down to comfort? Yeah, I think it's something you have to practice. Like, I've never been great with corners. I've always played it short. Oh, oh what a ball. Beautiful, beautiful oh. finish. There's the opener. They celebrate. They look at each other. They're aligned. You were just saying they've looked a little more offensive, but maybe not as creative as you would like. That was fluid. Yeah, that was sensational play. Quick passing into the box. Intricate. And they got the finish. You could say they, they, they've deserved a goal from their prodding and, and pushing in this game. The first 30 minutes, I'd say they've edged it. Could we see another response from Excel? It's not going to be, as we saw them in the last game against Complexity, respond straight away. And maybe the biggest surprise player that isn't a surprise at all now is Jarzinho. He makes yeah. it into every single squad. Is that due to maybe some limited options I, on the wings? I think it's because of limited options. He's a fantastic um, item in Ultimate Team, but I think there are, are cards potentially later on in the stage, later on in the, the FIFA cycle that will probably edge it over him. I think my biggest shock is Zidane. I think Zidane is unbelievable. I, I agree with you. I think I he's agree with so you. good this year. I, I, I think with the, how the midfielders push forward and giving that extra angle, and then I don't know where you fall on this, but the additional passes that can be made, if you've got someone that's really gifted and talented, it's noticeable. Yeah, I agree. See a play look there as well. Didn't work out that time. They've got possession back for SBQR. This will give them a huge boost of confidence, though. A huge boost. Just scoring, getting their first goal is going to hopefully push them on in their, their perspective anyway to, to maybe better things in not just this game, but their last game of the day as well. I said it when I was downstairs with Rachel. Every time I touch this commentary booth, we get goals. <laughs> We're not going to have clean sheets. There's more to come. So you see a bit of some resurface and recycling. You might even try to hold this for the 45th minute if you feel comfortable with some of the possession play. Jarzinho kind of probing here with Zidane. Forces a pass, maybe a chip through ball. We really haven't seen much aerial threat here from Excel. Yeah. I think it would be nice from a dynamic perspective. Yeah, there's a lot of teams that utilize that. Um, us, last week, we scored the majority of our goals just from that as well. That's something that we try to build in our repertoire, of course. Results didn't go our way in all of the games. We can see a chance here. This is going to be. Can he climb? Ooh. He can't climb. What a save from Vandersar. <laughs> One of those 50 50s, Ryan. Wasn't able to convert, but that is dangerous. And that would have been some extra stuff, and that would have hurt. They go up 2-0 just before the mark. Another short corner. R9 might have one more reset here. You got a minute of extra time. Oh, what a pass. Very creative there. A little yeah. more direct. They feel more confident. They feel way more confident. As I said, in the first couple of games today, they didn't look like scoring. You can see the emotions from them as they go into halftime. They've looked very, very threatening going forward.
So you're up 1-0, and they, they really could have doubled that. And it's got to be said, Excel with uh, Tom and Gorilla, we talked about how they, they need to go forward. They talked about how they want to score more goals. I don't think they looked that lively. They were missing some of those extra pieces, some yeah. of those details, the particulars, the expression. It wasn't that deceptive in, in the final third. Yeah, and I think, to be honest, they could count themselves a little bit lucky against another team when you give away three corners. Well, not give away, but when a, your opponent has three corners in a game, and FIFA 23, to me, that's almost a guaranteed goal, at least, out of those three. And so they were anticlimactic yeah, corners. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They didn't even make the most of it. So you could say in that sense, they've been lucky, but they need to bounce back. They, need, they really need to, to up the tempo in the second half. And we'll keep you updated, of course, on the other game, but MGCF and Complexity current two, currently 2-0. And you got to think that MCCF is going to turn on the constant pressure. We keep bringing it up. Yeah. But you can really change the speed of a game very quickly, almost immediately. Yeah, 100%. Even in our perspective, um, we were tuning up against Ajax, fellow Brazilians as well, of course, representing us. I didn't want to bring it up. You brought <laughs> yeah. it up. That we wasn't were, me. We were tuning up, and they went constant press very early on. It sort of caught us off guard. You don't really anticipate an opponent to go constant press in the first half. So it kind of squeezes you when it forces you to make a decision. And you can already see that Excel's already bringing that back line up a little more aggressively here yeah. as well. I think this second half is going to have a different speed. I always talk about FIFA having a certain rhythm to the game. I think the rhythm is going to be a little more offset. Oof. And what that will, will force SPQR is just to go forward. Yeah, They're exactly. going to force you to go forward. You yeah. have to do something. A lot of space to work with. Can you find that space? Not quite. Roberto Carlos looking for the counterattack. You can just tell the players are a little more lively. Now, can you make something of that? Pass and move. Send the likes of a Rude Hullet galloping through that midfield. I love to bring that up because it's so important just for cutting out and creating space. Cafu down the wing. Top of the box. Sedan again looking for angles. This is a game that you've got to play. How are you going to get that entry pass? There it is. Pele. Oh, that's gorgeous. Can you finish? Of course you can finish. Every little step, the move, the groove, the timing, the alignment, the build-up play, everyone touched the ball. That is a team goal. Maybe one of the best goals we've seen on the day. Yeah, that was great build-up play. It all stemmed from using Kapu in the 4-3-2-1, having his, him as the fullback on balance attacking so he can contribute offensively. You recycle the play into Zidane. And it's just about finding your striker, trying to get the ball to one of your attackers. And then look for an extra pass, maybe a skill move and a reverse elastico. Just anything to try and open up the space. And it was an easy finish. The goalkeeper movement there, though, you have to give credit. Let's be clear, they did go the right way, but when it's that, that much precision, it's always going to be a goal. And Mbappe here, seeing that step over, trying to resurface it to Ginola, wasn't able to step into space. And you can just tell they're under more pressure now. And it's got to be said, I want to know your feeling on this, but I'm happy to see kind of the return of stepovers and body feints. They feel more yeah. effective this year than in some of the previous iterations. Yeah, stepovers are, are sort of the goal too in transition and just looking for the speed boost. Oh, great passing. Pele can't quite get rid of or get by Rude Hullet. And that's, that's what I keep bringing up. He just takes up so much space from weird angles. Yeah. Even when he's in an unlikely scenario, he gets a clean tackle from from his heel. Maybe is it going in? Ooh. They've looked for that a few times this game and throughout the day. Just those Travellers on the edge. The first time pass into an attacker. One touch and then look for the Traveller. We got Jarzinho again. We're seeing a lot less possession play as well from SPQR. Roberto Carlos, can he find an outlet? Not quite. Good defending there. he get a little bit of a, a reset. We're going to have a pause. I was just going to say... When do you expect changes to happen? Now. It was yeah. right on cue. Yeah. What would you shift here? Because you're seeing completely different game plans mm -hmm. where uh, Excel with Gorilla and Tom definitely are more the attacking group now. Yeah. They're looking to the be a little more aggressive. And then on the other end, SPQR, you know you're going to have space for a counterattack. Yeah, this is the thing. It's, it's a tricky one because if Excel continue with this, it feels as if it's almost just a matter of when they're going to get a, another chance to score and if they're going to take it. So for SPQ, I would change something. I think when the momentum's in favor of your, your opponent, they're getting a lot more chances. They're getting a lot more possessions in the final third. You need to make personnel changes. Maybe drop your depth or maybe, I don't know. They need to do something to, to get back into it. First off, I want to see substitutions. And then yeah. when I'm looking at Tom and Gorilla right now, they're starting to ping pong that, that ball around. There's a little more tiki-taka. Yeah. You're seeing some more intricacies with those skills. You're seeing different skill move combinations. Uh, and if, if you're SPQR, again, you know you're going to have space and chances to score goals. It's a matter of kind of catching those. Speaking of Mbappe, off the chest. He's going to have to pull it back. Can't do it. Maldini again. Yep. Showing that big body, shoulder to shoulder. He's someone I sort of overlooked just because of the, his, his physicality. I, I would, of course, look towards someone like Van Dijk. I think the return of Van Dijk this year has been, he, he's, a, to me, the best centre-back on the game. Of course, it's kind of hard now to link him with chemistry. He can get two bar or two points of chemistry this year. 
But you've got Lucio, you've got Vieira. I think Vieira is the staple center back though, for sure. I've been a, a big fan of a few of the, the new items that have been added, especially with the heroes. I think Yaya Torre, uh, you just mentioned Lucio is better than expected. Pele, can you wiggle, can you work? Ooh. That was gorgeous usage with the Elastigo. You see the defender on his heels. Yep, that is genuinely a goal-saving challenge there. That was, to me, if that if that shot goes off, it's a, it's a goal. And that's needless to give it a possession like that. It's sort of rushed. They had time to, to maybe build up a meaningful attack, but they tried to transition too fast there. Would in the goalkeeper's hands. I don't think you need to play that. I, I don't I don't know. Maybe it's just a, a rush of blood. But they've got possession back anyway. It's like what you said, though. If the game doesn't shift in some way, you feel like they're going to be on the defensive end the entirety yeah. of this half because it, it's no denying it. The, who's going forward? Who's the more likely? Speaking of Mbappe, can he make the extra pass? Goes for it. There it is. Oh. Whoa! The goalkeeper, Van der Sar. Oh. What a reaction! Wow. What a save! I can't believe I, that's not a goal. Yeah, that to me has to be a goal, but we're going to see a corner here. This is it now. This is the first corner for XL. We saw them score against Complexity. Is Hulik going to get it again? Ooh. It's a great clearance there from Zambrotta. To me, another pause has to come in from SBQ. I'll be honest. Look at this. They just they have to do something to stop this onslaught. Jarzinho probably looking for Rude Hulik. You see that cancellation with the La Croqueta. Heel to heel. Oh, Gets Mbappe. blocked by Mbappe! Wow. You hate to see it. This just feels like a summary of all of Excel's games so far. I think they've been arguably the best team in all of their games. You could argue the complexity one could have gone either way, but the first game, I think they deserve to win. They were unlucky. In this game, the tides have shifted. I think they're, they're very unlucky to not be in a winning position here. And they need this. If you're looking to be top two in the group, remember only two out of five go through to the, yeah. the next stages of this competition. SPQR hasn't been informed. Everybody's getting points here. You yeah, need you a result if you want yeah. to challenge for a top two placement. 100%. And again, it's one of the things where it plays into your mind a little bit because you're playing the team that has zero points. Everyone else has taken points of them. You don't want to be the team to sort of give them, well, not give them points, but just to drop points against them because it feels as if you're, you're on the back foot compared to the other teams already. Plus, you've still got Team Hullet and Indian Pajamas to play last game. You kind of need, you need to get something. A lot of space to work with here from Pele. You see the early ball roll going for a Rabona cross. And you're going to see a lot of the Travella crosses, a lot of those Rabona crosses. They're way more accurate than you would expect. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It's a, it's a new feature this year, being able to, to manually actually choose when you want to Travella. A pass or a shot. That is a crazy mistake as Pele pushes forward here. Can he find space? Got to find space. Oh, he actually oh. was in there. I don't think he thought he could have turned in and shot there, but... Oh, the near post yeah, opened yeah, up. Yeah, it did. But we're approaching the last stages of the game, Mike. I think this has to be a, a sense of discipline. Play. <laughs> Maybe I've jinxed it. I was going to say play for the last attack. But they've got it back here. Jarzinho's taking space. Got to take a little more of that space. Waiting for the runners. Overlapping. Here you go with Pele. Give it back to Pele. Not so much. Cafu. Great dribbling. Left stick dribbling. Couple ball rolls. Needs help. Needs support. Here's the resurface. Zidane, that's the money zone. Can he create? Oh, fantastic the step, step over. over, the extra it's pass, fantastic. Pele on the near post, and you see the pop off. Talk about well-weighted, well-timed, very patient, 90th minute, blow the whistle. And that's exactly what they needed for their confidence. Wow, that was huge build up play on the edge of the box there. The man we spoke about, Zidane, doing enough to, to work his way in the box with the step overs. And the extra passes, they needed that last kick of the game. And it's got to be said, even the likes of Rude Hole, it doesn't really do that the same way this year. Yeah, it's There's true. something about Zidane, the way that he steps into space, and maybe that he's so dangerous for that long shot. Yeah. You have to respect you have to watch it. that as well. Yeah, there's so much to watch. But that is the final score. Excel winning two goals to one. They turn it around from a one-goal deficit, Mike. And when you're looking at SPQR, that's got to be absolute heartbreak. Yeah. Because you haven't been able to find form. You were already maybe counting that you got at least a point on the board yeah, there towards the end. Yeah, yeah. They had a couple counterattacks that had a lot of space to work with. Oh my goodness. Let's check in and see what's happening in the MGCF versus Complexity matchup. Yeah, part of celebration as well. I, I, yeah. I, that's why I wanted yeah, to yeah, take yeah. it. I'm, I'm hearing a pop off. I don't know who's popping off. Yeah, I'm wondering who's got the goal. I think we're going to be able to, to watch that as well. As we see, it was already 2-0. Oh, are they adding some more insult to injury here, Janola? That's just bread and butter. It's as simple as it gets, 3-0. And this is huge for complexity because a lot of people challenge if they still had it. Yeah. If this was the right collective, if this was the right team. And we're actually going to watch the last 15 minutes of this matchup. But I was there for that. <laughs> I saw everything happen on Twitter, on social yeah. media, between the community saying maybe it was just a fluke. Maybe these guys are past it as a team. 3-0 is, is resounding against MGCF who are, to me, uh, 
dare I say one of I'm gonna say I'm gonna say favorites is is the right, right word, but Oof. you'd expect them to progress. We see them trying to build through the low block, but complexity have impressed me. As I said, going forward, they're incredible, and the scoreline shows that. And Maxi's always been one of those guys that kind of offers to Jackson's defensive approach a little more creativity going forward with some of those skill moves. Yeah. Uh, but a 3 0 result, and I, I would argue the same with you. MGCF, even coming into this group, they're, is the favorite. Yeah, I say they're going off yeah. results. I agree with you. The, the history of what they've accomplished in the most recent FIFA as a, as a duo, they have to be amongst one of the best players or the best teams in this competition. So 3 0 is going to be a huge boost of confidence for complexity. Oh, great beautiful step, step over. What a finish. It's still in, in the run of the game. I don't know if there's enough time, but it does at least say, hey, we might have a last life here. We can make another chance. 85th minute. And the way that the team press works, the way that you're going to see some of this constant press, a lot of mistakes can be made very quickly. Yeah, and I believe this is MGCF's last game of the day as well. So they're going to end the day, as it looks like, on five points, which is still a reasonable amount of points to get from the first day. So they're going to be, at worst, I think I believe it will be three points off the first position. That's if one of Team Hulet or, or XL win their last game. So it's still... They're still very much in contention for the top two. Well, it's still worth talking about complexity here as well. Yeah. Uh, if they finish this game off, they're still undefeated. If they close out the day with a win, you're saying two wins, a couple draws, not a bad day in the office. Not at all. Remember, all these competitors are going to be back in four weeks, and they're going to play another round yeah. robin, and that's going to situate where people go forward, who advances, who's eliminated, all of the above. I just don't leave enough time here for uh, MGCF to do anything but some consolations. Yeah. Of course, it's very important to not let games get too, too far away. Of course, a 3-1 and minus two goal difference isn't the worst in the world. But we're hoping they just don't concede another. It's a great bring oh. down there. Sliding maybe a, a little bit rash, but if one possession back, as we say, I don't believe they'll have enough time to push forward and get another goal. But it's a great result for Complexity as they go into the last games of the group stage. I believe they will have five points now. They drew their first game, which you could say they were sort of unfortunate to draw in the last minute against Team Hillet, but they've been very, very impressive. As you see the competitors shaking hands. And that's a real statement piece, I'm telling you. In this group in particular, there hasn't been many games that had separation. Everything's been one goal. It's been super cagey. There's yeah. been a lot of draws. This is not a high-scoring affair. And maybe they're figuring it out a little bit late. Or that's that American bias with the, the Jackson and Maxi tag team that's coming together. It's all we've got yeah. in the midst of the complete competition. These are the only two players that are representing North America. Yeah, and they're representing it well. They've played, like I said, for me, they've been my team of the day so far. Of course, there's still another round to go, but I think they've been fantastic. Oh, absolutely. And we're going to keep the ball moving. We're going to keep everything rolling. I know Rachel's downstairs. She's going to have all the highlights for you. And then we've got one more round to kind of decide yep. the day. One more round to go, but let's wrap up round four then just now. And I thought we were going to have a resurgence from SPQR Brazil, getting that first goal against XL nonetheless. I thought, game on here. They had a little sit out, didn't they? Just to kind of reset, chat to the coach and see what they needed to do. And then XL also needed something and came back firing. It was close. It could have been two, it could have been two nil. XL came back, one one. And they missed a couple of chances. Honestly, they could have they could have made it 2-1, 3-1, 4-1, but they left it until the very end and uh, they got the win. They needed the win. Now they're on five points, a lot less pressure after finally getting a win, so they needed that. So did SPQR, but I think XL needed it more. Yeah, and we talk about teams needing points on the other side of the pit as well. We had the other massive game, Complexity taking on MGCF, and it was a little bit of an upset, we're going to say. MGCF, semi-finalists, we've said this a number of times at the World Cup. Complexity trying to get that fire back, and they've done just that. Complexity are here to prove a point. They're also on five points. I think right now we have, we'll see it later, we have four teams on five points. But MGCF, right, one of the favourites in... Out of, if not in the competition, definitely in the group stage and complexity. 3 0 up inside 75 minutes. Obviously, finished 3 1. But they are showing that last year was a one off and they're here to stay. Yeah, showing that last year was a one off. And they mentioned when they were talking to Kyle a little bit earlier as well that they had to have a long, hard look at themselves after the World Cup, finishing bottom of their group. That wasn't how they wanted to kind of end their career, and they possibly would have done if they had another season like that, not performing at the level we've seen. Well, the results don't always tell the complete picture. It was a little closer in the SPQR Brazil XL one, 2 1 in the end to XL, and then MGCF, we just spoke about that. Unfortunately, they lost uh, three goals to one over complexity on the comeback. 
at the moment. Well, I haven't mentioned this. Four teams on five. It's as close as it's been so far in the EA Sports Cup. But SPQR, unfortunately, still on zero. Still have one more match to go. It's MGCF who cannot get any more points. You can see they've already played all four of their fixtures. And SPQR now go up against Complexity. Complexity on the back of that massive win, though, going to make hard work for SPQR of this final fixture. I think it's definitely a mental game. At this point, you have zero points after four rounds, three games. So you're not expecting much, whereas Complexity, you know you have the quote-unquote best position. Two of your main rivals are playing each other. The third team is taking a break. So you're playing bottom of the group. You should be confident. But I have my eyes on TG and IP against XL. Top of the table clash, you would say. I mean, these two are powerhouses as well in Europe. We know so much about all four of the players this matchup. I think maybe XL. To answer that question, maybe XL. Because they've had two draws. They barely snatched the win against bottom of the group SPQR, so they want to prove a point against NIP, who are one of the best te teams in the competition. So I'm excited for that one. Who's going to be more nervous? More nervous, I think XL. XL, because they've struggled a little bit more than Ninjas? I think so. They have a bit more pressure on them. OK, well, apparently XL have more pressure on them, says this man here. That matchup is your final round of fixtures. It's Team Hullet, Ninjas in pyjamas, Olalito and Levy taking on the local boys, Team XL, in the form of Tom and Gorilla. We cannot wait for this one. Come back and join us for it after this short break. Well, here we go then for the final time at the EA Sports Cup. What a round five we've got and what a selection of commentary uh, pairings we've got here as well. Three of us in the commentary booth. Dr. Nightwatch and Ryan Passar of Manchester City joins me for this final game. And what a game we have indeed. Team Hullet Ninjas in pyjamas, of course, up against XL in that all-important matchup. XL, smash and grab, Ryan, right at the end, their first three points on the board. Yeah, I think they've been gutted to, to come away from that without the three points. They needed that, in my opinion, against the team that have been struggling throughout the day. But you can say likewise for SPQI, they'll be upset to, to drop points on the last stage of the, of the game. Well, let's put our focus on TGNIP, Nightwatch, because this is a team that so far so to speak, in this tournament, they are still unbeaten, aren't they? They are, but so are XL and so are Complexity. We have three teams on five points, a win, two draws, and no losses. So I think this is the most difficult game for both teams, arguably. Although you could say Complexity as well, but these two were the favorites coming into this group stage. So excited for this one. And watch you where they are as well. You just saw some of the accolades and achievements from Olilito and his teammate in Levy David. They had the last game off, so the chance actually to have a little bit of a break. Watch all the action unfold. But you're right, there are quite a few unbeaten teams. And how much of a rarity is it, Ryan, to see everyone on five points? I mean, we won't speak about SBQR because it's been a day to forget about for those guys. Yeah, they've still got one game left, though. So they're going to be hoping that they can get some points on the board. But five points is very close between all the teams. So, yeah, this game is very, very important for, for either team. Well, XL on the flip side just snatched their first big win uh, in the 90th minute in that game. We thought they might have been able to get a win just before that. Let's speak about XL for a period of time. They are a team that you could argue, Nightwatch, have got a lot of pressure on their shoulders to go and achieve a trophy this year. I think for themselves as well, it's not pressure from the outside, I think it's pressure from the inside. You have two very good players individually off a bad year, I would say, for their standards in 2v2. So. Considering how today has gone, five points is good on paper, but the way they've played, maybe they're not happy with it and they want to prove that against NIP. No, absolutely. I think you're right. They're still unbeaten. They haven't obviously 
lost a game today yet, but what a chance it could be to end and to pick up three points, Ryan, at this moment in time. Yeah, it'll be a huge again against a team that's basically competing to, to advance into the next stages. So you want to make sure you take points of them, or at the very least, you don't lose in this game. So worst case for them, they'll be hoping they can get a point out, go into the final week still in contention, and potentially joint points on um, with a team that's in second place. Well, let's have a look at the foot squads that are being used in this matchup, and I'll put you both on the spot to work out which one is your preferred uh, team. This is obviously TG NIP's team. Virgil van Dijk comes in. You'll be happy with that, Nine Watch. Uh, unfortunately, though, we don't see any Vieira in this team. On the flip side, let's have a little look at XL's roster to see what differences there are between the two teams there. But overall, quite a strong team, but no Vieira, Nine Watch. No Vieira. Usually you play Vieira, you pair him up with uh, Van Dijk at centre back, but it's still an option. Zidane, we see him both teams, baby and mid, both very viable. And on the flip side, no Virgil Van Dijk. Ryan, you give yeah. me uh, an interesting nope. no. face <laughs> expression on that. Explain. I'm very confused that why Team Willit have normal Mbappe and Excel have the informed version. I wasn't sure if that was a tie fight, <laughs> Peter. Yeah. I'm not lying. It, yeah. it makes no sense. Why would you not take uh, the man that was in? I mean, everyone wished he was in their red picks last weekend, yeah. just gone. Um, if that is true, personal preference or? I mean, it's what you're comfortable with. One reason or another, maybe you don't like the inform Mbappe and you're like, yeah, I just want to play regular Mbappe. It's what I feel comfortable with. It's a mental thing. And I hate to do this, yet. I'm going to do it because why not? Give me a score prediction for this game. Nightwatch, you're up first. 1-1. One, one. Ah, I was going to say that. I've got, I've got to go with something different now. I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to say, <laughs> two, 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 two. Okay. Two, two. All right, we're getting four goals or two goals. We're on the way this one. It's our last game in round five of week three of the EA Sports Cup. Two unbeaten teams, both on five points. What a chance this is to top the group and to take maybe just a little bit of pressure off your shoulders coming in to the next round of fixtures in four weeks' time. It is TGNIP kicking from left to right, keeping on those individual player curses. The captain, Olilito, with the red cursor above his head and his teammate, Levy David with that yellow icon on the flip side for XL in that red strip. Tom, the team captain with the blue and Gorilla from right to left in that green strip. A massive goal for them, Ryan, in that 90th minute. Who was it that bagged the goal? Was it Tom I, by the I'm reaction? I'm not sure. I think it might have actually been Tom. But yeah, it was a, a huge goal nonetheless. Whoever scored it, they, they needed that goal because, as we said, they, they went 1-0 down to SBQI in the first half and it felt as if that they weren't playing well enough to get back into it. But the second half, I think they completely dominated and they were rightly winners. Could be a chance here, aren't oh, no, Defended well by Maldini. I noticed that they play a lot for the extra passes. Yeah, they, they missed do. one chance where they had a, a free empty net. They pass it across, again, free empty net. But when you're put on the spot, you yeah. don't expect that pass. Yeah. You're very likely to miss if you, if you just pick a spot. Yeah, exactly. And one thing I want to give credit to someone at XL, I'm not sure who, but their badge, the Italian Lecce team badge, I think they've chosen it because Lecce, backwards, I think you would read it as XL. Oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> that might be clever. If you read Lecce backwards <laughs> with the two seats, I yeah, think you're I'm going to say it's none of them two that's done that. It's got to be <laughs> happy. I'm going to say, I'm going to put it on there. That could be a, that could be something. Look at the bullet run as well. Keep an eye on that. I think they use it as bait. I, I don't yeah, yeah, see yeah. Um, Team Hullet, NIP, um, Levy or Olilito really going for those so-called German crosses. I think they a lot of the top players, they don't rely on that mechanic. Yeah. I see them use it more as bait to open up space in the middle of the pitch. It's just something else to think about, isn't it, defensively, of, of what could be coming my way. Van der Sar very confidently getting the ball back there for XL. Been a very different week, this one, hasn't it, week three? I think defensively, there's been a lot more solidness from a lot of the teams that we have seen here. What's going on there? Just been dispossessed. He's a little bit too long on the ball there from Alilito. Can Excel make the most of it? Lovely switch of play, finds Cafu. Now watch the numbers in the box that might start to queue up. Hullet has made that same run again, just to cause some issues. Went for the extra pass there to Dan, but unfortunately no way through. Yeah, that was great build-up play. We saw with their goal late on against SPQR, they looked to build up with Cafu and then just recycle to, to Zidane or Hullet for the extra pass or the pass into the striker. And then once you get the ball to the striker, that's where you just have to, the magic happens, whether it's an extra pass, a step over into space, a reverse elastical, you just have to, to make the right choice um, at the right time. One thing I was just about to say before the pause menu is that I noticed that both teams were playing 4-3-2-1. Now we see a 4 2 on screen, so maybe either I was mistaken or they just switched. But I think that 
a four-three-two-one matchup is um, very likely to to give us a lot of goals. Again, counter attacks. You have the wingers when attacking. You have no fullback when uh, when getting the ball back to to face. So I was expecting that matchup, but four triple two I think is is not that good against four three two one because you don't have an advantage offensively as it's a mirror match and you have a big advantage defensive disadvantage defensively. Well, there's the first pause of the game. Comes after just twenty minutes. Maybe just a few words on board from both Renzo and Javi. This could be a chance. Sar nine. Finds Mbappe. This is TGNIP looking for their first real chance at goal. Well, it's scoring would be its own storyline. Hullet wins it back now. What can happen from this sort of area? Great. Maldini just throws himself on the line and it's a corner. What can we see from this? Solilito that's over it. Fate maybe to play short. Just keep an eye on the runners in the box. Hullet or Virgil van Dijk. Corners are, are genuinely, it's petrifying giving them away. That's why, I don't know how you felt about it, Night, which is well. SPQR had three corners in the first half. Not one they, they sort of executed properly. They went short. I feel as if going short isn't the right play this year. It is if you're not comfortable. Yeah, I think they're all... Oh, nine. Could be a gift. Another great save again. And we'll keep talking about callers because they've got another one. Yeah, I feel like that's something you must practice on now, right? With the way it is now, how effective it is, especially free kicks as well. I think it's worth just, just learning the, the best ways to score. Watch Van Dijk here towards the back post again. This time actually went towards the front post, sorry, for Hullet. Couldn't quite get ahead on it. Chance to break for XL if they can get these red shirts forward. I think the uh, not the last corner, the one before that. If um, Excel had conceded, I think it would have been on them, because from the other side of the pitch, it was Zidane taking the corner and it yeah, was out swinging. You have to move the keeper. You have to move, the, have keep to move the, yeah. the keeper. You know it's not going to go in. Yeah. Hello. Good feet. Finds R9. Even better feet from Gorilla. Jardinio. Just waiting patiently. Look how many white shirts about that for TGNIP. Can they carve a, an opening, though, through this midfield and defensive line of TGNIP? Patience in the defending again, and a big win back from Levy. No gaps. No gaps in the defence. Very, very good defending. I think, individually, both Ololito and Levy are very good. And it's one of those where either you are kind of desynchronized when playing 2v2 and defensively you, you leave a lot of gaps, or what we just saw, very good on the same page, and you leave no spaces. This could be a chance. Jardinio, great oh. feints! And an even better save again from Edwin van der Sar, who has come to save the day. I think that's a perfect skill choice there, to, to the right skill at the right moment. So it last week, Dunham as well, but there's still a chance blocked again. Another corner for Olalito and Levy. They're piling on the pressure now. What can we see this time? Or what are we seeing, we should say, from this corner? They're playing it out wide again. They're looking for the one more pass, then maybe the direct shot towards goal. Pele this time tries to Ooh. carve a skill move and work his way in the box just very quickly. The other game in this round five is just kicking off right now. SBQR against Complexity. We'll give you the latest on that as soon as the goals go, and hopefully a few of them do so. But interesting call in Nightwatch. Yeah, we see that um, from the training rounds. They have practiced the in-swinging, the out-swinging, the short pass, and the top of the box pass. They did it twice in a row. So it's very, very good, especially this year, to have different set pieces. Maybe a shot. Cheeky chip, Mbappe. Cafu's done so well to get his body around Mbappe there. But just as you were saying, yeah, the, I mean, the range of different corners. I mean, this is only the, the first month of, or, or into the second month now of competitive FIFA for this year. Cast your mind back to Copenhagen a few months ago. Just the level of different set pieces we were seeing there. Expect to see so many more different variations across the next year. Yeah, I think the new system, I think it's a, it's a very good system for free kicks. And for corners, it gives a lot of variation, especially if you practice. If you practice swinging corners, if you practice short corners, I think that's what NIP have focused on and pays off. Half-time, Ryan, is there a team on edge or we, is it even Stevens? Um, to be honest, I think Team Hullet, um, Ninja Pajamas have edged it, in my opinion. I think they've had the better of the chances. I think XR have done all right to maintain themselves in the game. They've done well defensively, but I think Ololito and Levy, as well as as um, Nightwatch said, they've defended perfectly well. I think they haven't really given up many chances. I mean, the biggest chance was that header from Van Dijk, wasn't it, really, yeah. if you cast your mind back. But you said that'll be on XL if they conceded that. 
Hundred percent. I think from that position, the way they take the corner, you are you have to move. Have the keeper. to move him. Yeah. They're not gonna score, so the only way they can score from the corner is through a header. <laughs> wow. I mean, Brian, you, said, you, see, <laughs> you said they might have edged the half. I mean, from what we're seeing, um, it's uh, been quite a dominant half from uh, from TGNIP. The XG's of course in their favour because they've had four shots, and four of them have been causing. A range of problems. We're back on the way for the second half in our last round of games. Remember, both these teams are unbeaten. I mean, if this is a draw, they both share six points and it will set up this Group A perfectly well in four weeks' time. I'm hearing roars behind me because there may have been a goal in that game. There's been a free kick in this one. We'll go to that game as soon as we can it's follow him. I think it's maybe too far. I don't know. I don't think you're shooting that. Yeah, I, think I don't think you're risking it. Yeah, it's not worth it. I think it's slightly a tiny, a couple yards too far out. Zidane, Although, over like, it. Outside of the foot? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You never on, know. On the left. the left side here. I think, I think if it's, it's on goal, target you know? green, it <laughs> might actually me. go in. I think this is Did it mean Zidane? Zidane. It's, if it's Surprise on target, me. Here we go. Oh. Corner, though. Yeah. Yeah. Excel, they, they, they're good from corner. So yeah. it could be one XG. Well. First up is getting been XL that have been defending most of the corners up to this point. What can we see from them? They've given us a range of different techniques from Ooh. their corners. Watch the run. You've got Hullet and Vieira there just teasing. In it goes Ooh. towards Hullet. It was defended well by Hullet. The chance could still be alive on the volley, maybe. It nearly fell kindly to Mbappe. And let's see what's happened in the other game. Then we teased there was a goal, and the goal... Looks as though it's gone the way of complexity. Great feet, by the way, from Joxan there. Just dancing around the box. What a finish. Joxan, we know the year that he came in in the FIFA scene. Very, very good start. He kind of slowed down in 1v1, but we see that as well as being back in 2v2, I think Joxan is back in his usual 1v1 level. And how important is that, Ryan, to have those just those little moments in 2v2? You know it probably too well with shelves. Just to have that back in a flare. You know you've got a player like R9 in your disposal. He can do what you want in the box. He's got a five-star weak foot. Just use him into your favour. And just like that, he's just carved out a perfect goal. Yeah, it was a, a great goal. And again, as, as now what you're saying with, with Jock Tennis, it's great to see someone like that who's come into the scene during the times I was in there as well at the start. And he's just a fantastic player. And to me, as, as now said, he has dropped off a little bit 1v1 in terms of his results um, compared to where he started. He started flying basically dominant. He's running right in, in North America. So it's good to see him, him back at the top as well in 2v2. And yeah, hopefully they can continue that. And that's not looking good for SPQR as well. That's their last game. And at the moment, it's going to potentially be a very disappointing trip back to South America, knowing that from 15 points, or sorry, so from 12 points, you've got zero. Yeah, I think the, the, the main takeaway is, is the, the distance away from, from second, potentially, because if one of these two win, they will be eight points away from a, a qualification spot going into the final week. That's almost, you'd have to hope for every single result to go in your favor, plus you need to perform as well. And as we've seen, there's no guarantees that could happen. So it's, yeah, it's going to be tough for them to, to bounce back. Well, into the pause menu, we go again. We've just under 28 minutes left to play here. You can see Coach Javi there just getting some words on board. What have you made of that recruitment from XL? I mean, there's not many top, top, top FIFA coaches around that live and breathe FIFA esports, but there's a handful of, especially, I mean, Renzo's on the screen there, but Spanish coaches, Edu and, and, and Javi, he's moved over to England now and uh, he's taken over that move. I was surprised, but at the same time, it does make sense. And here we see a Trevella. Theo. Theo Hernandez <laughs> with a celebration I have not seen before. Sub-Zero. Um, 1-1, one, one, and that might be the first <laughs> point big, for SBQR. <laughs> how big, Ryan Pessoa, could that point be for the Brazilian side if this game ends as yeah, a draw? it's massive, but I'm not even moving the keeper. If I, see nah, no. <laughs> I mean, now I am. Yeah, now I have to move the keeper because of that. But wow, that is, that's one way to get back into the game for SBQR. Travella with, with Theo. I think if you're SPQR, you 70th minute at 1-1, you turn on constant press. Yeah, go for I it. I think zero points, one point, doesn't matter. You, you need, need the you three need points. Win. Yeah, you have to go for uh, it. I think that goal probably sums up SPQR's day. They need a goal scorer. R9's not been doing it. Yeah. Mbappe's not been doing it. Fia Hernandez, do you fancy it? Yep. He steps up and uh, gives us quite an, uh, an interesting celebration as well. That could be a massive point in that game, the level against complexity now. Back on the way in this one. Into the final third. Team Hullet Ninjas in pyjamas, building towards, creating a bit of danger. Hullet says yes, why not? From 30-plus yards, 
may have just given TG NIP the chance to top the group. Dare I say that was an L2 <laughs> shot? Yeah. That was not a Trevella. I think what? L2 just power shot it or knuckleballed it even. Wow. I mean, Van der Sar, what, what are you doing? The, the, I don't know what to say there because you, that must have been a Trevella attempt. I, don't, I think so. I, I think it has to be. There's no other way. I don't think you power that shot, but it, it worked anyway, regardless for them. They've got the goal, but yeah, question marks on... If you do that 10 times, what is the realistic chance of that going in? Without Trevella in it, normal power shot. I don't know. It's very slim, but to me... XL have to move the keeper there, regardless of if it's a normal shot or not. The keeper has to be moved from the moment the pass is played in there with the angle, you know people got you have to move the keeper. Uh, it reminds me of FIFA 19 times with the, the shots, the first time shots, you have to move the keeper. Could be two. Ginola. There's been a massive goal in the game next door. I don't know which way it's gone. We'll have a, a look as soon as we get the goal in. Was it complexity that got it? Was it SBQR that has said the Currently got no points on the board. XL looking for a way back into this. 15 minutes left. Zidane. Oh, no. I can't quite connect the pass to Mbappe as he was just challenged. The goal was gone. Complexity's way, so it looks. This is even at half time. Oh, There's a Travella from R9. And that's Joxan with his second goal in the game. Incredible play there. They're the, they're the ones where you can't really blame for not moving the keeper there. You, you can't really adjust it that quickly anyway. You sort of have to, if you do that, you give up the defensive and then there's going to be a, an extra pass on or a step over that they could push into the box. So it's just great play there from um, complexity to, to take the lead again. Unfortunately, it looks like it will be a disappointing plane journey back to, uh, to South America as it's not looking good, but there is 45 minutes left in that game still, isn't there, for SPQR? There is, and most importantly, there is the constant pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've seen how hard it is. I'm telling you, right? We played last week against Ajax when they went constant press and heretics. It's, it's so difficult to come out or de to come out of defence because you can't really play out of the back with defenders or midfielders. You don't want to risk turning or dribbling because just be just in case they don't turn as quick as you anticipate. You're just and looking for like a hole and long ball at that point. Yeah, but then even then, sometimes it doesn't. You, you put full power on it, trying to aim it all the way down. It goes to the centre mid. You ha it's really difficult to play against. My rule now is just get it out, lump it out, just trying to aim for the corner flags or not the the, the sides of the pitch because. If they do end up intercepting it, at least you could potentially just get a throw on from it rather than going through the middle of the pitch. Well, let's talk about this one then, gents. Ten minutes left for XL to try and create something. We're in the pause menu now. What is happening in that in that pause, in that change? Is it a constant press and, and maybe some new personnel coming on? Constant press and, as we can see, a 5-4-1, which is personally my go-to against constant press because you don't really care about going forward. You want five people at the back, four people in the midfield, as you're kind of used to when defending. Yeah. And a... a left back and winger on the on the wings so you can potentially play for throw-ins as Ryan yeah. said and hopefully just kill the clock. We've seen late goals already though. I wouldn't be shocked if there will be an, another chance in this game for, for either team. But for Team Hula, I, I would just say just try and die. The, it's easier said than done. As I say, we were in the position. We tried it and we conceded late on as well. It's just something where if there's an opportunity to score, you have to take it. If not, oh, oh my. my goodness. <laughs> Wow. Who was that? He was off the bench, whoever it was. Oh, yeah, that could have been so special. Yeah. Yeah. Confidence. You are right, though, about late goals. XL scored a very late goal in their last matchup, which got them their first three points from a win, I should say, on the board in their first outing in Group 8. Is this their chance to get that equaliser now? Zidane over the top. It might fall kindly. It won't. It goes for a corner. Five minutes left. But XL a chance from another set piece. That's cool. I'm calling it. Yeah, same. <laughs> I think it, I think this is it. Corey from the corner. Vieira. Now Hullet in the box. Cruyff over it. This is Gorilla in control of the corner. Watch the player movement. In it goes. Well played by Virgil van Dijk. Right place, right time. It still is alive, this chance to Mbappe. Doesn't fancy the shot directly. Cruyff might fancy a cross into the box. He could try and work it in back to Hullet. It falls. Where is that through ball opening up? Is there even enough space to try and manoeuvre it? Good feet. This is Tom with Mbappe. Is there a cutback? Oh. Dancing in the box wins another corner. It's fantastic play as well there from Tom. They've got another corner. Two minutes. He needed heroics from Virgil van Dijk in the last one. This time. Where's it going to go? In it goes. Soon did again. again. It's Haaland <laughs> that's back defending. It's another corner. 
for Excel as they build up the pressure. Time running out. They have to score from, from this one, I think. Well, it's the man. But he's got so many bodies around him. Haaland's there. Virgil van Dijk's there, just trying to stop him. And it goes in towards Vieira! <laughs> He didn't need Hulley that time. And with maybe the last kick of the game. Away back into the tide. It looks like the points will be split. Yeah, you can't really stop those, those corners. It's very difficult. To be fair, I noticed something Excel done there. The first corner that was cleared with Haaland, they had it on the, the driven low. But they noticed that because um, Team Hullet were running towards the near post with taller players, they changed it to cold. Just, it's a slight difference. So it goes over the first man. And yeah, so it's a great corner again. I think most of their goals have come from, from set pieces today. But again, you have to take those when they come. You have to be really good at corners. And it's a testament to, to show how much they practiced it. You said 1-1, one, one, Nightwatch. You might be uh, you might be in for a, another correct result there. <laughs> There's not long left in this game at all. But they were building from those corners. And you said maybe it was just a matter of time. I think both teams take the draw here. Um, yeah. Especially XL. Because I think NIP is going to play for, for the last attack. And they're either going to score or games ending 1-1. One, one. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong here, I think Complexity would be top in the group if they were to get the result here with eight points, which wouldn't be a bad outing at all. Both these two would be on six. That's the 90th minute that has got in from Vieira. But three, three minutes. minutes, you never see that when you play <laughs> FIFA this year. Maybe the referee just fancied being extra kind and adding three minutes. Last chance. Looks as if it will fall. So Wally Lito and Levy David. If they want to go forward, that is, they'll be waiting for the final chance of the game. Here is their time to try and make something happen. Pull it. Might fancy a cross. We'll look to delay it as more people get their bodies into the box. And that will do us here with the last kick of the game and our last matchup in round five. The points will be split, but one thing that they both do have in hand, they're both unbeaten from their first outing in Group A, and they're both on six points. I mean, we were saying a bad day for XL, but realistically, is it a bad day? No. A win, three draws, no losses. I think they won't be happy, but it's a good day. Yeah, and Ryan, just adding on to that, both on six points. Yes, complexity at the moment. Look as if they're about to go and get eight points today. We're going to go and check into that game now. Ooh. They're 15 minutes away, Ryan, from topping the group. And we said last year it wasn't a good year for them. What a way they've come back into this group, hey? And they look like they're going to give themselves... Just a little bit of breathing space. Yeah, the, the extra two points could be the, the all important that can send them through into the knockouts in the last week in, in a month's time. So they'll be hoping that they can see this out. But 15 minutes to go, SBQR, they need a win. In my opinion. I don't think a draw really changes much. So they need two goals in this game at least to just try and to give them some sort of lifeline. They don't want to go home on, on zero points because for me, that is one million percent. In my opinion, I just cannot see how they, they redeem that. But again, I they just need to get something from this game. And where do you think maybe it hasn't gone to plan? Uh, obviously, results-wise, we know that. But for, for SBQR, Ivan, from, from what you've seen today, what have they been lacking from their games? It's not more lacking, it's the experience. The other four teams have been playing for at least one year together, whereas SPQR is a, is a new duo. And that that's always always a big, big difference because having one month or two months of practice versus 12, 14, 24, more, I think that's a huge, huge difference, especially in these narrow best of one games where decision-making, patience, yeah. nerves, experience, that, that's where I think it, it goes wrong or can go wrong. An extra 20% that just hasn't been there today, you could argue. Complexity looking to make it three goals to one. Vieira. Just stopped in his tracks. There could be a running race here for Mbappe if he can get the touch. No, he can't. Virgil van Dijk does superbly well. That's not the best of balls, though. This could be a give for SBQR to find a way back in the tie. Really well done. Just about by one van der Sar, but two Virgil van Dijk. Just to delay the shot. Yeah, wow. I thought as if that was going to be a, a huge mistake for complexity. They'd have got punished for it. But it's another corner from SBQR that hasn't led to, to anything. Yeah, again, short corner. You cannot do this at this level. You have to have more in your locker. Could be a Back cutback. Oh. Wins a corner. SPQR, what have you got in your locker from these sort of areas? Ronaldo likes to play short. Gives it back to Thea Hernandez. What can he do from this far out? Maybe he doesn't fancy a shot and maybe trying to bag a brace in the game. This could be dangerous, though, because look at that running race that Arno oh. could have had. He was just in his own half, so he would have been onside. 
Still is onside. Is there another overlap available? He's off. Can we get a ball into the box? Complexity. Just happy to take probably time out this game. They know that they'll be top of Group A with their results today. Unbeaten, eight points from 12. It's not a bad outing, is it? I think the main difference is complexity's win over MGCF. I think if that ends in a draw, obviously the top four teams, no losses, only draws between each other. But I think complexity have edged it with uh, their 3-1 win. And if they can seal this game 2-1, I think they're, they're looking good for next week. Next match week. Yeah, well, they'll be back in four weeks. Or will they be? Back top of the pile of SPQR. Got one more chance. They've lofted it forward. It's a bit Hail Mary. Still could be on Virgil van Dijk. Wins it again. They're making it hard for themselves. Complexity. Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, the my bar. God. oh, my goodness. And oh very nearly God. complexity. Just. Just. About to get over the line, but for a split second, they nearly just threw away two points. They got possession back twice there. And I thought, surely, they just, just launch out for a throw and whistle will blow, but they just kept giving it away there. And that was almost a, a goal from nothing. It would have compensated their, their efforts against MGCF. Like one Brazilian team doing it for the other, but yeah. Jokson and Max, they're looking good. They're looking very, very good and one of the toughest, toughest groups. Yeah, well, as we said, the two-time FIFA E Club World Cup champions are back in town. They're back in London. The only North American outfit here in the EA Sports Cup. Well, top group A, yes, a handful of teams have remained unbeaten here. Three out of the five teams, but eight points from them. It's not loads of room, Ryan, but it's a two-point gap. Yeah, you've got to take any point, as I said in the first week. Just make sure that you're in contention and it's not a... Uh you don't have to basically win every single game the last week like SPQR have to do if they want to give themselves any chance. But again, for these teams, you've got, I think it's completely on eight, and then you've got two teams on six, a team on five. So it's very close. It's only three points difference between um, first and fourth. So yeah, all to play for. And we said this group was going to be tightly contested at the start of play today. I'd say it's, it's really delivered that storyline, hasn't it? 100%. When you compare the group of uh, Fnatic and uh, Falcons, it's also a tight group, but it's five teams. Whereas here, it's a tight group between four teams. So I think next week will be an absolute bloodbath between the four teams uh, at the top of the table. And the four weeks now, I mean, you, you could probably speak about this the best. What happened in those four weeks? You know, Man City played last week. Now you're yeah. back in three weeks, technically. Is it a case of we're just looking back on those results? Or are we thinking um, the game's going to change in four weeks' time? Obviously, you have to look back on what went wrong, what went right, what we felt felt like we needed to, to improve on. So you have to go back on that and, of course, look forward to the, the next games in a few weeks. So, yeah, there, you have to account for there could potentially be another gameplay patch. You have to account for that as well. But you just have to take every day as it comes and just keep practicing. Well, gents, it's been an absolute pleasure commentating with you both today. But that is round five done. That is it from the commentary booth. We're going to join Carl Walker now. He's joined by two different players from two different teams to chat about their action here in Group A. Thank you, Brandon. I am indeed. I'm having to keep these separate uh, after going head to head throughout this evening here at the EA Sports Cup. Week three, Oli Lito from TGNIP and Maxi from Complexity. Incredible stuff from both of you today. Maxi, I'll come to you first because you were just saying you feel so stressed. We know that there is highs and lows. You said this group is back and forth. The games are back and forth as well. And that game just there, it took it down to the very last seconds, didn't it? I almost had a Damn heart attack, man. They hit the post three times in like the last 10 minutes. And I don't know, man. Every single game has been decided by one goal, and it's always coming down to like the last play of the game. So this, this game is stressful. Talking about it coming down to the last plays of the game, we saw the same play repeated time and time again, and it felt like it was maybe inevitable uh, off that corner that it was going to happen, but that doesn't make it easy, does it? No, I mean, it's just one of these things that can happen. Now it happened to us. I think we uh, probably didn't deserve to draw against either Complexity or uh, MGCF. So I think we got a bit karma back now. Uh, but I mean, six points, decent start. Could have been better. But I mean, we always expect us to be on top of the table, right? So we are not really satisfied yet. Well, in four weeks' time, you'll be back here and you'll be going head-to-head -head once again with all of the competitors in Group A. And you guys will be going head-to-head -head as well. It's so close at the top. Right now, we know that, that you're ahead eight points and you've got six points. So it is so close. It could all change in four weeks. How are you going to prepare for that? How are you going to make sure that it's not tight again in four weeks' time? I'm not leaving my house, man. I'm just going to grind, keep doing what we're doing, and we'll see. <laughs> and Olilito, for you, you know that top two will go through. You know that you don't just want to be second, though, because you don't want to make it any more stressful for yourself doing that. You want to make sure that you're at the top. How are you going to prepare with Levy? 
Uh, I think we probably have a boot camp uh, again, uh, as we had now. And uh, I mean, it does really matter for us as uh, if, if we finish first or second, we can beat any opponent uh, in uh, this tournament, so we feel confident. Well, things are definitely hot in, gro in Group A. These guys have gone head to head, including all the other competitors as well. Rachel, Mike, Ivan, what a day it's been. What a day, and after those interviews, I guess what we've learned is they're going to be playing a lot of FIFA. Max is not leaving his house, and they're going on a boot camp at Team Hullet, Ninjas in Pajamas. But I mean, it was so tight. I think we are all safe. Even you, Mike, who I, lo I know kind of back the North Americans coming into this, didn't quite expect this complexity to turn up. I expected this complexity, but that last game was kind of shaky. <laughs> it, 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 they're happy to walk out of there with a win. No. That's all I'll say. And obviously what Olito was saying there, he thinks the results didn't particularly go his way. He was a little bit unlucky, would you agree? I mean, when you have so many draws in the group stages, with late equalizers, you're always going to feel hard done by. But at the same time, it's something you have to take into consideration. Best of one, you have to adjust. Yeah, they obviously had some amazing qualities in their matches. And one actually we're going to talk about, it was this awesome goal. And uh, we'll talk about it after we've seen it. And then we'll show you some cool replay we've got as well. And you see Eusebio working it around. Rude, hold it, unleashes, unloads. Vandestar, not a great reaction. And I love the hyper motion replay this year. It kind of gives you a little bit of a different animation, a different freeze frame. I've watched a lot more replays than maybe I should have but it made me feel good about myself after I scored the goal. And especially from set pieces and long shots, it just has a different kind of connection. To give you a bit more information as well to take forward. For sure, but I, I just think it's easy on the eyes. I'm not even there for the information. At that point, I'm like, yeah, I did that. That's me. And it's a beautiful re review. I, I, I'll post some stuff. I'll post some stuff about it, you know? Going on from a couple more teams that we saw in action <laughs> today, SPQR, they had a real tough day. They've got a lot of work to do. We saw some glimmer of hopes, especially like you just mentioned, that last match up there could have come away with a point there. Four weeks to change things around. What on earth would you tell them to do? I don't think we should be too hard on them. I think it is one of the toughest groups for very, very tough opponents. And not only that, you're the only team in the group that's a new duo, mm -hmm. a new team. So you have kind of pressure on you to perform, to prove to your team they've made the right decision. And you come off a, a day like this. It's not easy, but you have to give your best next week and hope the results go your way, not be too hard on yourself and know, I mean, for these guys, career ahead of them. So, learning experience. I mean, yeah, it's great to be here, isn't it, taking part in these events against the best in the world. But unfortunately, at the moment, they are on zero points. We can confirm that right now. So, Complexity, you mentioned it, eight points. Undefeated at the top of the table there, Excel six. Team Hullet, Ninja and Pajamas also on six. And MGC F Esports on five points there. And it's interesting to say that the top three teams didn't lose a match as well, which is great. Three unbeaten teams, SBQR, we mentioned them a short while ago. Teams, SBQR, we mentioned them a short while ago. And we've now shared three weeks together. This is, looks different than the previous two weeks in terms of results. We haven't seen a team struggle like that either, where they haven't been able to get any points. They really haven't put themselves in a position to be competitive. And all the games were close for the most part. They just didn't have the margins. And it's little details. We talk about maybe even the corner kicks. Most competitors are mixing up short corners, but more so direct corners. We didn't see any direct corners from SPQR. And, and we talk about like these fine details at the competitive level, anything to give you a little bit of an advantage, some sort of margin, you've got to take that. And that's sometimes where you're spending that extra time grinding. And you work together for a minute. I'm Pen throwing pens. <laughs> what Lift. are those goals? Right. Sorry, I just, I didn't need those details, you know? Anyway, men Mike mentioned <laughs> those corner kicks resulting in a lot of goals. There might be one in so far. Let's see if there was one. Mike LaBelle, did you put one in there? Let me take you through the goals of the week today. We had a lot of late activity, and I'm here for the drama. Tell me more about it. This is a great team goal here. Overlapping run, rude hold it. Extra pass made for Ronaldo. R9 steps into space. He had that instantaneous equalizer to get things underway. And at number four, again, R9, the star player. You see all the skill moves, the resurface, the cancellation, a green time finish, why not? And Complexity gave you a little bit of that razzle, dazzle. This one was just on display. You save Bio with that recycle, and Rude Hullet steps into space. Might have been slightly even missed time. It's a strange animation, but it worked out. Goalkeeper was thrown off. And you see, again, looking for these penetrating passes, the body, the shape, the movement, outside of the boot, Travella, R9, top of the box, creativity. We salute it. And last but not least, my favorite goal of the day, Pele, bring it back. 90th minute, not quite. Goalkeeper movement, it's there, but you can't stop R9. No, sir, re. I'm ready to throw more stuff.
You let me know. I'm ready to go. Have you got a thought on that, Ivan? Don't throw me. <laughs> Please, stay far away Maybe from something me. something R9? Uh, R9. I mean, R9. He's always been R9. Every FIFA, he's arguably the best striker in the game. So you expect goals from him. I know SPQR, they rely on Theo Hernandez. But I think R9, if you use him properly, he's going to score goals. Oh, he always does, doesn't he? Uh, so that is round three. <laughs> Week three, we've had 15 teams already. <laughs> Five more coming your way next week, which is the final round of round robin fixtures. Then we get to repeat. That's what we're doing here. It's obviously two rounds of round robin. So these are the teams you're going to Oof. see in action. I mean, RB Leipzig, which is going to be very entertaining. You've got Anders and you've got the world champion Umit in that one. You've got Blue United. You've got Makers Sweden, Optole and Ole Bolly there. Gildy Sports, you've got... Former world champion in Nicholas is up against a new partner in, in David Sanchez there. So some really interesting team. And then Team Footwears, you've got Nick Sneb and Ethan. I mean, there are so many big names yet again. We're spoiled. And remember as well, the top two from each group only go through. And after today, that's going to be so tricky. Can I go on the board early? Go on, you All go. All right, I'm just saying. I, I think that one of the teams to watch, the Dark Horse Santa Group, is going to be Footwears. I like what I've seen. They're going to be active. They're going to be wild. They're going to be crazy. They're going to be spontaneous. And I'm, I'm here for all of it next week. I'll be Leipzig. Anders, how excited mm. are you to see him go up with Umit, the world champion? 100%. I mean, I think everybody in the community is waiting <laughs> to see Anders in, in pro play and com competition. Um, I know they played last year. They didn't perform like they expected. So I think now they'll, they'll have new things prepared. But again, Footwiz is also my... I wouldn't uh, even call them Dark Horse. Yeah, uh, come on. I wouldn't call them Dark Horse. I think they're one of the best duos in the world, and I think they're going to show it next week. Well, these two can carry on talking about who their Dark Horses are for next week. Don't forget Makers as well. They were good, weren't they? Team of the Season Cup last year, they did the business. But, guys, this has been week three. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you again to our brilliant team in the studio. And not forgetting Richard Buckley, who unfortunately this week has been a little bit unwell, so I'm sure he's watching from home as well. Well, guys, happy Halloween. Of course, it is the 31st of October, so wherever you're celebrating, have fun tonight, and we'll see you same time, same place next week for week four. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.